Hey, what's up guys? Drip Drop here, and in today's huge, monstrous Christmas special of an episode, I'm going to be ranking every single, yes, every single level from all five games in this Donkey Kong Country series, with Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3 from the Super Nintendo series, and then uh, Returns from the Wii, and Tropical Freeze from the Wii U. Now, I'm not going to be doing any ports, any enhanced versions, so no Switch, no 3DS, and no GBA ports, even though some of those games may have introduced features that did improve the game I just think it's better to do the way the game was originally intended and originally made because I feel like this is the game that most people experience so I just think it I just think it makes more sense to do the original version of these games hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you understand although Donkey Kong Country 3's uh, extra world will be missed that is a fire world I just want to point that out um, but first thing I'm going to go over is why am I playing Bash Master the Unbreakable in the background, even though it's not a level and has nothing to do with this video at all? And I'll tell you why. Because he's a cool-ass boss, he's my favorite boss, he has my favorite boss theme, and I don't really see myself ever having any chance to talk about this homie on my channel ever again, so I'm going to give him his flowers now. He is a G. Um, now, I'm going to go over the criteria. So, I think the, mo the least important thing in a level that I'm going to be taking account for is atmosphere and setting. It's got to look cool, and it's got to sound cool, and it's just got to make sense, you know? Um, but I do think that even though that is a big factor, I think it's the least important factor of what I look for. Next thing I'm going to look at, just enemy variety. What's going on? How unique is this level when it comes to obstacles, and how fun is it? How, how well integrated are they in the map? Uh, and the other thing I'm going to be looking at is... How fun is it compared to how fair it is? I like hard levels. You're going to notice I prefer the harder levels. But there's a way to do challenge to make it fun and not to make it bullshit. And I think having a level artificially bullshit into making it way harder than it needs to be is lame and stupid and bad game design. Um, a lot of water levels kind of have this issue where because you just move so slow in the water that you're probably going to die your first couple times playing some of these levels because you're just too slow to be able to react to shit. And I think that that's pretty lame. So being fair is a is a pretty big criteria for me, um, and the least and 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 the most important thing for me is just how does the level flow? How does it how does it play? Is it fun? Is there anything interesting going on? Is it dynamic? Is it creative? Is it cool? Do I I do I just want to play the level? And is its mechanic um, cool enough for me to play it over a different level? And I think it's hard to kind of rank this between series because the later series have mechanics that are just way more impactful and way more cooler because they're more modern and they have the technology to do cooler shit. But the classic levels were pretty ahead of their time in that way too. And I think just the classic levels don't get completely overshadowed by the new games as well. And that's why I did want to make this list because even though the older games are 10 years fucking older, uh, even like 15 years older, they are still on par with the newer ones. And I, and, and I think I did, I tried to, I tried to be as fair as possible to give the older games a chance, even though they were on limited more hardware. Um, but I think that I'm pretty happy with this list. Um, it's literally worst to best. There's 200 and 33 levels and yes they are all ranked from worst to best don't ask me how i did it it was a long ass journey to get this video to how it is but um i hope you guys really like this one i put a lot of hard work into this and um unfortunately for some of them my audio is a little bit goofy because when you have as many audio clips and shit in a video like this it's hard to make them all perfect and my fucking microphone kept fucking up i had to unplug it and plug it back in it was having some some issues i don't know why unplugging it plugging it back in that always fixes shit i don't know why um um this video is going to start off a little bit more negative because obviously um the lesser levels i have more negative opinions on so the level will get more positive as it goes on this is my favorite video game series of all time really that's why you know i i do love this series so when i say negative things i'm more so comparing it to the rest of the series and not just in general so when i'm like oh this level's mid it's mid for this series compared to other series it's a great level but you're comparing all the different levels i i, I hope that makes sense so when i say something negative it's not as negative as it may sound i'm just you know just taking into consideration that everything i'm saying is in reference to the entire series and nothing but this series hope that makes sense hope this wasn't too long i had a lot to say there 
Um, yeah, let's just get in. This is the Christmas special. Hallelujah. Let's get it on. Like Donkey Kong. Poison Pond sucks fucking dick. I fucking hate this level. Stupid son of a bitch. Stupid motherfucking level. Fuck Poison Pond. But now that we got that out of the way, this level's a lot of things. Great is not in the top 100 words that I would use to describe this level. It is easily the worst, the worst level in this game. And is one of the worst video game levels of all time. Ever. Period. If you don't know why this level sucks, or if you don't know why this level is so bad, you have just not played the game. You can find someone that will disagree with everything. Everything. You can think of the most sinister, vile thing ever, and someone will support it. This level is an exception. If someone were to say that they liked this level, a black hole in the time-space continuum would form, destroy our entire universe, and make a new one, getting rid of that person. It, it, you cannot exist in a universe where someone likes this level. That's how shit it is. This is terrible. I don't even know who made this level. They should be... I hope they got fired. What the fuck happened? Tyrant Twin Tussle is easily the worst level from Donkey Kong Country 3. This level fucking sucks. It's hard, but not in like a fun way, more in like a bullshit ass, inconsistent ass, weird ass hitbox way. The enemies, I'm glad they're only in this one level, because goddamn are they weird and goofy and just fucking atrocious ass hitboxes. I'm glad this is a secret world level because it's not required to beat the game because this shit makes me never want to even beat the secret world because this level is just so fucking terrible. I fucking hate this one. I fucking hate Black Ice Battle. This is easily the worst level in Donkey Kong Country 2. And it's even worse because of the fact you have to unlock it. You have to spend your hard-earned gold coins that you fought tooth and nail in the bonus games to get just to unlock this piece of shit level. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine unlocking this level, going and saving, and then playing it and realize, oh shit, now my save file is completely ruined. Now I have to go get 15 more bonus coins to find a funner level, because this is horse shit. Or maybe, maybe you play this level and you're like, oh, well now I'm not even going to see the rest of the secret worlds, because this one's so bullshit. You literally, you literally cannot see what's going on. You just have to jump down and hope you don't die. It's so ass. It's not even hard, because it's like challenging. It's hard because it's just terrible game design. This is easily the worst designed level in the second game. This is awful. Now that I'm better at the game, I don't hate this level nearly as much as I used to, but I still fucking hate this level. I'm not even gonna give it the time of day like I gave Poison Pond about cussing it out and yelling about how much I hate it. Just my voice in general right now to just tell you how I feel about it. I don't know why this level exists in the way that it does. I don't know why it was... I don't know who directed it. Um, I hope that they had a, a, a talk with their children after they got home about why they got fired from being a game director. Because, holy fuck, this is rough. Like a fucking dog. Bow, wow, rough, rough. Ooh. Uh... Just everything about it. I'm not even going to go into specifics. Everything about it is just terrible. Terrible. The worst temple level. The worst level in the game. One of the worst levels in the franchise. It's just, just, just get it off this fucking screen. Get it off my screen. The best part about Croctopus Chase is that it's in the same game that Poison Pond is in. Because if it wasn't for Poison Pond, this shit would be the worst level of the game. I hate this level. I... It... I will say it is the prettiest of the four uh, water levels, like the uh, like the glacier ice kind of look of the level. It looks nice. I do like the color palette. Everything else is doggy doo doo. Um, I just noticed actually, like just now, as I'm as I'm saying this, that all three of the um, the water levels besides Poison Pond start with CC Clam City Coral Capers and uh, Croctopus Chase, of course, Poison Pond just had to fuck that up, too, because Poison Pond can't do a goddamn thing, right? But as for Croctopus Chase, with a name like Chase, you think it would going, be going pretty fast, like a super speedy race, but it don't. You say, oh my god, this shit is slow as fuck, please get it out of my face. I can't think of anything else that rhymes with Ace. So, we're gonna, we're just gonna end it there. This level sucks. Even though this level looks really cool, Ripsaw Rage is 
one of my least favorite levels to come back and play in the series. Um, I really don't like this one at all. It's really slow. And just the whole idea of this level is just stupid from the get-go. So you have enemies dropping at you from the top of the screen. But you don't want to sit too low at the bottom of the screen. Because then you'll get hit and die. So then you're at like this weird kind of section to where you don't know when you're supposed to speed up. Or when you're supposed to slow down. Because if you speed up then there might be an enemy that comes and drops down and kills you. But then if you go too slow, then you'll get hit by the saw blade. So it's just a really weird kind of the pacing changes. Like sometimes you're just supposed to know you have to rush forward. And then there's like a long stretch of land where you don't get any height. So you're just almost going to get hit by the saw. But you don't know when it's coming because you can't tell when it's coming. And it's just a pretty memory-based level that I always hate to see memory-based levels in games like this. So this one obviously is going to strike pretty low because of it. It looks pretty fucking cool though. Red Hot Ride is easily the most boring level in the original trilogy and probably the entire series. Um, there's nothing too terrible or horrendous or trash about it. It's just so uninteresting and uncaptivating and unintriguing that there's really no reason to care about it or come back and play it really at all. It's too slow to be challenging or captivating. It's just too slow. When you come up on an obstacle, you know exactly how to do it, where to do it, and when to do it. Because it's just so slow that you will not die. Almost guaranteed you will not die. Unless you miss a, like, a super easy-ass jump, um, you won't die. It's just too slow to really have any challenge at all. Um, I really don't have much to say i really don't see this concept working at all i don't i like i can't think of any reimagined way that this level would have succeeded in being a fun level i think its concept was just kind of unfun from the start coral capers is a water level um that's really all it is at all it has the unguard the water buddy but other than that Nothing really to say. The uh, visuals in Donkey Kong Country 1 look really nice for all of the water levels. But, um, this one just doesn't really stand out. Obviously, music's great, but that's about all it's got. You already know water levels don't go very high on this list. But Lava Lagoon has the cool little hot water, cold water gimmick going for it. Uh, the thing with me, though, is the level isn't really interesting enough on its own for this gimmick to really do much. All this gimmick really is is just a glorified timer. I mean, nothing really happens when it gets too hot. You just take damage. That's it. So, it's really just go fast or you die, which doesn't really have anything to do with temperature at all. Um, I do like the little seal, though. He's pretty cute. Little clapper. Uh, he comes back in at a later level, though, and I, I like his placement better in that one. Personally... Bouncy Bonanza's my least favorite level to go back and play in this game. Thankfully, it's easy enough to where I can get through it without dying a bunch of bullshit times like Poison Pond. But in general, probably my least favorite level to go back and play of the three original games. But it's not as bad as some of the other levels. I think what makes this level bad is just how boring it is. There's a lot of waiting for bees. There's a lot of waiting for enemies to stop doing what they're doing so you can get a good timing. Uh, you gotta bounce on the tires. You just... It's just not it. And then there's like a split-way path, which you think would be cool, but you end up finding that neither path is interesting or cool at all. Um, you get Winky, which is just such a terrible animal buddy, and just... Just throw the whole level out. The game would be better without it. Rope Bridge Rumble is the most worthless and nothing level in this game. The whole, the whole time you are playing this level, you are thinking of playing a better level. But it's not so bad to the point of where you're saying, oh my god, this level is so bad, F tier. You're more so thinking of like, your brain is just not computing anything as you play this level. You're literally just sitting there with not a thought in your brain as you beat this level. Literally. There's nothing that happens at all. This game... This game does not benefit from including this level. At, at all. Not even not even a little bit. But it's not a bad level. 
It's just so nothing and devoid of anything, you'd be hard pressed to find anything of any how of this level at all to feel anything about it. Literally. Fish Food Frenzy is just such an annoying level. I don't know why this level even ever existed. Um, it doesn't play as terribly as you would think, but it is still pretty goddamn annoying. You have, you have a fucking fish behind you that you constantly need to feed, but since the underwater controls are just so weird, it's kind of hard to control him. And then if he eats the wrong kind of fish, he'll get angry and hit you. And it's just, a, it's just a wacky, wonky level that nobody, I don't think, in the history of ever has ever been excited to play or beat this level ever. And so I'm not even going to waste any more time talking about it because it really doesn't deserve my time. Now I got a pretty hot take with saying that I don't really like the song of Sticker Brush Symphony that much. A lot of people say it's one of the best songs in the entire series, and I don't like it as much as everyone else does. Um, but I do think a lesser hot take is that this level kind of sucks. It's just barrel spam, and it's not really fun. It's like a barrel maze, but it's not really fun to figure out. It's just a, con a lot of waiting, and if you shoot the wrong direction or go the wrong way, then it's just a bunch of time wasted. It's just a time waster. That's pretty much what this level is. Um, the look of the level's cool, though, like the brambles and the, the bright blue sky, um, but it's just not really interesting or really fun at all. Um, there's a lot of barrel levels in this game, and this one is probably the worst one. Um, it's just not very interesting. The barrels don't really have any interesting gimmicks either. This game has so many different, like, barrel gimmicks, and then this one is just basic-ass barrel shooting. It's like, I feel like if you're gonna make a whole level based on it, you would make it interesting, but it's just not really at all. Which sucks, because, you know, it's a cool theme, but, yeah, it is, it is what it is. To be honest, I kind of have respect for Poisonous Pond to just think of the most evil, most bullshit, most bogus, most just diabolical, just a vile mechanic in a video game and put it in a water level. It almost makes me want to like this level. Almost. Having a water level where your controls are reversed is just plain criminal. Just the just, just just the audacity to even put this in this game is just appalling, really. Um, I will say though, I do think it is a cool callback that the same poisonous liquid gas that makes your uh, controls reversed is the same color as the poisonous gas that King K. Rool shoots you in Donkey Kong Country 2, which reverses your controls. I'm almost 100% sure that that was an intentional choice to keep it the same color, and that's a pretty fucking cool callback. Before I go on to say how I really feel about Web Woods, I just want to say that I like what it was going for, you know? It, it wants you to use the Animal Buddy's abilities. It wants you to have a challenging experience that the experience of the level is entirely based on you. You basically make this level for yourself. Every path you take is a path that you have to create yourself with the animal buddy. And I also like the slight fog over this level. It just gives it a very creepy, eerie vibe. Um, problem is, this level fucking sucks. This level's shit. Fuck this level. Y the fact that you are just over a bottomless pit almost the entire level, and the only thing you do is you are just constantly making your own platforms with the spider that will eventually fucking time themselves out and it's so inconsistent you never know which one's gonna time itself out you don't know how long it's gonna stay up you you're like a ticking time bomb you you're always trying to fucking rush through because you can't take your time because you don't know when your fucking little fucking resting point's gonna fucking disappear and you're just gonna fall to your untimely scary terrible death but also you don't want to go fast because then you'll probably end up fucking yourself up or get hit by an enemy coming through it's goofy, um, and it's silly, and it's stupid, and holy fuck, I hate this level. Um, and I can't even say it's badly designed, because you design it yourself. You're designing your path for you. So, really, I, I'm getting mad at me, <laughs> because goddamn, I do not set this, I do not set my path very well in this level. I'll tell you what, I, the amount of times I have died on, it's not even that hard, but it's just... It's stressful. You never know when you're going to fall. So then you end up falling because you're worried about falling. It's terrible. 
Um, and I think a lot of people do feel this way about this level. I'm pretty sure this is not a hot take at all. This is like a, a lot of people's least favorite level in this game. A lot of people are probably surprised it even made this hot, to be honest. I used to hate this level a lot more than I do now, but barrel drop bounce still certainly is not great. Um, it's not terrible and awful like I used to think it was because the, the hitbox on the uh, barrel is a little stupid. And there's one part that everyone remembers in particular of four barrels going down the waterfall and you got to jump on all four consecutively. And just the jank hitboxes just kind of make that part so terrible. Um, really though, this level's not really long enough to be that big of an issue, but it definitely does have its parts where it's very frustrating to play. But as, as you get better and you get more used to the hitboxes, it doesn't get as bad. The only reason that this level is even this high is because you're forced to use Unguard. Now, Unguard's the homie. He makes the water levels actually somewhat fun. So the fact that you get a level where you have to play as him, that's pretty cool. I like I like giving my boys some representation. But other than that, this level's not it. It's lame. It's boring. Um, I really don't have anything to say about it at all. It's just a, another water level. But you're forced to play as on guard, so that makes it pretty cool, I guess. But most of the time you're going to be playing with on guard and underwater levels anyway. But at least for this one, you're forced to. So, hallelujah. Tracker Barrel Trek is easily the ugliest level in this entire series of games. Um, which is so crazy. I don't know how the hell you take, like... The theme, like when you think of a waterfall, you just think of just a beautiful sight, and they just made it look ugly as fuck. I hate, I hate it. Um, the level itself is is okay. I mean, it's really mid. Um, it doesn't even really do anything terrible. It's just ugly to look at and boring to play. It's pretty slow. It drags on longer than it should. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of this one. I don't think many of. King of Kling is one of those levels where it gets worse every time you play it. Uh, this whole level kind of is just teaching you the uh, hold mechanic of grabbing on the, the grassy sides of the walls and the ceilings, um, which is something you could not do in the original game. So it's trying to teach you this new mechanic. Problem is, it's such a simple mechanic that having an entire level based on it, it's just, it's just by proxy going to get super boring as fuck. And what what really sucks is the first half of this level is a cool tutorial, but it's still fun. Uh, the second half, y you, it's so slow. You have to wait for these like turning wheels to have the right patch of grass for you to jump on. And then you're just climbing up these long ass shafts and it's just not fun. It's, it, it takes forever. If the whole level was as boring as the second half, this shit would be in like F tier. But because the first half of the level is pretty nice, it saves it a little bit, but it's still a fucking slog. Especially it's the second level of the game. You're starting off a brand new speedrun, and this, this is the second level. Like, come on, man. As much as I love Ryuzen Rambi, they fucking massacred my guy on this one. This does not feel like a Rambi level at all. When you play a Rambi level, you want to be fast, you want to feel indestructible, and you just want to keep moving forward like the Robinsons. But no, you have to wait for the trees to be at the right fucking angle. You got to go back to geometry class and get the right fucking slope interval. MX plus B equals Y or some shit. Don't, I don't know. I don't remember. Y equals MX plus B. That's what it is. You got to find the right slope to jump at the right time to get the right angle to land on these stupid trees. And you just, you can't be fast at all. You have to wait. And of course... The level where you're playing as the invulnerable animal buddy that's supposed to kill everything. You get introduced to, to fucking animal or to enemies that can kill you that you can't kill. Genius. Really genius. I don't know how this level came to be. I don't know how this was the final product that they designed that they decided on. It's perplexing and it's puzzling, and I don't want to think about it anymore. This shit, D tier. C tier. I don't know, I don't, low, high D, low C. At least it has Rambi to save it from being F, but fuck. When I was little, Skidda's Row used to be one of my favorite levels and one of the ones I looked forward to playing in this game. But uh, after replaying a lot of these levels and putting some time and thought into them, uh, this one doesn't have anything. Its atmosphere is really nice, but the look of the level doesn't compare to the gameplay of the level. The gameplay is ultimately what matters, 
and this one just doesn't really do much you can jump on these little pink crocodiles on the log cabins but apart from that there's nothing cool or interesting about this one really at all um and i'm struggling to say anything about it so I, that, that's all i really do have to say it's pretty pretty bland i think hornet hole is a cool level that is detrimented by its difficulty more so in a way of it's not hard because it's challenging, it's hard because it's bullshit. I think this level is in a perfect example of how to not introduce a mechanic. Now, I think that out of the out of the honey levels, that this is probably the hardest one, and it's also the first one. The, now, the honey mechanic, as someone who's beaten this game tens of, probably 20, 30 times, I'm still not that used to the honey mechanic. And so for the first level where you're supposed to learn how to use this this weird ass inconsistent movement, it's the hardest one and it has the most bullshit enemy placement. Uh, it just kind of rubs me the wrong way. In a game that's generally regarded as some of the best game design in video games, at least in 2D platformers, the fact that the introductory level of an already inconsistent game mechanic is this shitty. Um, kind of sucks because the theme of this level is super cool like a honey hive because the bees are already like the scariest and most intimidating enemies in the game and so the fact you have a whole you're like in their like lair is cool but then when you start playing the level you realize how unfun and, and slow and just not great it is um, but once you do get past the difficulty spike and once you do <clears throat> get good it's an alright level it's nothing great but it's just so unbeginner friendly um, and it really does start my favorite world of the game off to a sour taste. Mudhole Marsh is just so lame and forgettable that I had to go re-watch the video uh, that you're seeing now of me playing this level to even think about what I had to say about it and I still don't have anything. Um, it's not a super bad level, I mean it's a decent level, it's, it's, a, it's a level in a video game that you can play. So, I mean, it's it's there. You can do it. It's just, there's really no distinction, really, between this and the other swamp level. Um, oh, that was a bad voice crack. That voice crack was more interesting than anything in this level um, at all. But, yeah, this I really don't have anything for this. I mean, there's vultures, well, mini vultures, but that's about it. So, yeah, this is pretty lame. Also, fuck that jump right there. All right, I'm out of here. The best thing about Lockjaw's Locker going for it is that it's the introductory of the amazing the excellent the immaculate outstanding soundtrack that is lockjaw saga probably the best underwater theme of all five games and it also introduces the underwater theme of this game which is like in a flooded pirate ship deck like the underground of a flooded pirate ship that in itself is just such a cool level theme and the fact that this level gets to be the one to introduce the music and the theme itself He's pretty lucky to do that. Um, unfortunately though, it is a underwater level and underwater levels are just pretty boring in general. Um, this one kind of stands out though because um, you you can jump out a lot and you get a lot of like little air time like on land in this one. But a, a majority of it is still underwater. But at least you get the homie on guard. He's pretty cool. Me giving Clam City the award of best water level in the original Donkey Kong Country game is probably a lower achievement than a participation trophy, but I think Clam City's okay with that. Um, it's a decent water level, but it's still a water level. Um, the enemy placements are in very distinct spots. You won't really get blindsided like a lot of other water levels. You generally see your obstacle, and you just have a you just have to have the a good timing similar to the barrel levels um i like the way that it's like these clams are like turrets set up at like little angles trying to snipe you and uh it's i don't know it's cool i guess i mean it's still kind of yeah but it's it's the coolest yeah you know wiggle vine wonders is a decent idea and it's not a terrible level but i just really don't like playing this one it's just slow there's a lot of auto scroller waiting sections and they're not really too difficult they look kind of difficult but they're really not and the parts that aren't the auto scrollers are just kind of nothing you're not really doing anything at all um i wish i could like this one because i i kind of do like the forest world in donkey kong country returns as a whole 
but this level is just easily the worst level in that world and one that I generally don't ever go out of my way to play because it is a, a secret level so you don't have to go out of your way to beat the level to beat the game so I usually skip out on this one it's not too interesting the thing that makes me like Baza's blockade more than a lot of other water levels is that it shows you like where the enemies are going to be coming from a lot of time in water levels you're going to die because an enemy comes and hits you off screen and while that does happen a little bit in this level generally there's like the little cannons and the little tunnels that show you where the fish are coming out of so you know where to look out from and just the fact that it gives you that indicator so you're not just blindly fucking swimming through the level and getting hit makes me like this one quite a bit and it's a little difficult too it's difficult but it's fair which is pretty rare for a uh, water level i find spring and spiders is a pretty all right level i guess i mean i'm not really too impressed with it i'm never really excited to come back and play it but it doesn't last too long and it generally goes by pretty quickly um really the only thing i can really say that makes it good is that its layout is cool with the kind of tunnels the vertical tunnels but that's not even like exclusive to this level that's just how the tree levels are in general so i really the only thing that makes this level good is its theming so I, it's probably the most mid level in the game to be quite honest because it's not bad it's just so not interesting um but it, you know it's not a bad time it's fine out of the waterfall levels from this game, Rocket Barrel Ride is the funnest, but that really doesn't say much. And it's also the one that looks the prettiest, but again, that also doesn't say much. The other two look like dog shit, but this one actually looks quite pretty, and I think it does blend the nice, uh, bright, gr the nice bright green uh, ground look goes with the uh, waterfalls pretty well. And the way the um, the Rocket Barrels boost you up the waterfall, it actually makes sense why it would be at a waterfall. I just, I don't know. My, the shittiest theme, in my opinion, throughout the entire series, uh, but they do make it look pretty nice in this one. Um, as for the gameplay itself, I mean, it's okay. It's fine. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't really last too long. Um, this level can go by pretty quickly if you're hitting your shots right. Um, but for the most part, it's just... It's just kind of like you just put your brain on autopilot. You don't really have to pay attention too much. The jumps and rocket and the rocket barrels aren't really too hard to time. They generally play themselves. Um, there's, I don't know. It's just, it's just a all all right level, I guess. I don't know. Reptile Rumble is one of the most mid levels in the entire series. Not that it does anything wrong, but it's over fairly quickly. And it doesn't really do anything special at all. There's a couple sections where it's literally the exact same enemies in the exact same pattern doing the exact same thing down the exact same hill, like two or three times. And it's just not worth really discussing anymore. I mean, it doesn't do anything terrible. It doesn't fuck anything up. I don't hate this level. It's just... Eh. Buzzer Barrage is a decent level. It has some decent ideas and some decent gimmicks, but there's just a lot of waiting. You just gotta wait for your pocket to fit in and fit through the uh, buzzer enemies. And it's just, um, I don't know. There's just a little bit too much waiting. And the uh, the cave theme from DKC3 is not one of the better ones, so you don't really have anything interesting to look at either. And, um, you know, the main fun part about Squawks levels is being able to shoot and kill enemies and you can't shoot as the purple bird. So you're kind of just, it's kind of just a slow slog all the way through, but there are some decent puzzles and it is a little bit tricky. So you're not really bored. You're just, well, you're bored at the waiting sections, but when it comes time to actually dodge the enemies, it's not very boring because you actually kind of have to pay attention because they will get you. They, they, they come out of nowhere sometimes. You got to be alert and prepared. This is war. Murky Mill is such a different and creative level that I really don't really enjoy playing, but I will give it some props for just being so different and unique. Um, in this one, you just uh, you have to look out of the light from the rats because if uh, for some I don't know how the, the myth started. I don't even know if it's true that elephants hate mice, but if the elephant sees the mice in the light, then it gets scared and runs away. 
so you have to kind of finagle with barrels a little bit and there are some parts that are a little jank with the red bees that instantly break your barrel so then if you miss your barrel you have to go back and go pick up an old barrel and that's really what makes me not like this level is if you fuck up a barrel throw you have to run all the way back and grab a new one and wait for it to respawn and then wait on these slow wooden platforms to move up and down and it can just feel a little slow um, especially where all these levels so far you can get through them pretty fast because this is still the first world of the game so you can kind of just blaze through it and then this one you have some like waiting sections which is never fun tumbling temple is my least favorite temple level in donkey kong country returns and i just don't find much enjoyment coming back to this one um obviously it's pretty hard so it has that challenge aspect of always having to stay hyper focused but this one's just kind of annoying you have to wait for some places to fall and if you jump too early then the fucking fucking whole level will fall on top of you and drag you into the lava and the lava even being in this level in the first place don't make any lick of damn sense why is there lava levels in the fucking beach water sea world i don't know and i don't really want to stay here long enough to figure it out either this level ain't very good um it can be interesting i guess but yeah it's just it's just really 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 mid Moving Melters would be a little bit lower on this list if it wasn't for the very end with that fireball gauntlet section. But apart from that, the majority of this level is pretty boring, I would say. It is definitely a ugly touch on the last volcano world near the end. And it's one of the last levels you'll play in the game, so it does kind of leave a bad taste um, and when you beat the game for the first time. Because um, it is just so close to the end. Um, which is unfortunate, but it's challenge keeps it kind of interesting, I guess But really it's only here because of the very end of the level that parts pretty fucking cool where you have to dodge all those fireballs uh, You know just auto scrollers are just kind of lame in general um, They can be done sometimes good which you'll see later on in this list But this is just unfortunately not one of them Rocket rush is probably the goofiest level in this game um, you get in this big-ass, jank-ass rocket that has completely different controls compared to anything else in this game. And you have to, like, go left and right going down, but then sometimes the rocket will, like, shoot you up, and it's just really weird. And for a final level, the cliffside atmosphere, I love the cliffside atmosphere, but for the final level, it really doesn't fit at all. <laughs> Um, and like I said, the barrel itself is just jank. The way it moves is just jank. The way it just randomly shoots itself up is jank. And that's only the first half. The second half of this level is literally pure memorization bullshit. You are going to have to die four, five, or even six, seven, eight, nine, ten times before you even have a chance of beating this level. You're probably better off just drawing a picture of this level and trying to figure out how to beat it that way. Because goddamn, this level is pretty fucking bogus when it comes to the um, off screen shit. The idea of vulture culture is a good one. I do like it. And the forest theming, even though it's only in two levels in this game, uh, looks very good. I really love the backgrounds for these levels. Uh, but this one just, it's a little finicky, you know? You're bouncing off these vultures in the barrels, and sometimes your bounce sends you at like a random, like, uh, like a slope. And you have a lot of bullshit deaths. And especially because this is the first level of the world, you, you when you die, you have to go all the way back to the second world and redo the boss. And it just makes dying just a little bit more frustrating than normal. Which doesn't affect its placement in this list, but I did just kind of want to point out that, you know, its bullshit is a little more bullshit. Uh, but, you know, for what it is, it's cool. And when you're speedrunning, you can just skip the entire level because there's a hidden shortcut, which I'm glad because, I, yeah, this level's pretty annoying. Cog Jog is easily the worst and most lackluster level in the factory world, and I wish I could say it's still great, but it's not. This level kind of sucks. There's some cool barrel sections here and there, and there are some creative enemies that are introduced in this level that are a little bit more dynamic than just jump on and kill. Um, so I will give it credit for that. And some of the secret collectibles are kind of fun to go out of your way and get, and it does have the button the secret button there's three levels in this game that have a secret button that you have to find and this is one of them so it does have that going for it um but other than that just slow patiently waiting decent 50 song shitty donkey kong um it's just 
not great. <laughs> that's really if, if you've played this game you'll know that that's just the best way to describe this level not not great <laughs> even though lakeside limbo is the worst starting level out of all five games i do think that it is still quality and it is a very good starting level and it teaches you the mechanics uh you're introduced to the elephant uh animal buddy which replaces Rambi, unfortunately but i still like uh ellie's inclusion in this game um, I love the background out of all the boardwalk levels in this game, which I think there's only three, unfortunately, because it's a very cool level theme. I do think that this one is the best, um, visually, anyway. Um, I just love the, the bright blue sky with the bright blue water and the mountains. I just think it all comes together very well, and it does set the tone of this game quite well. I never think of Shipwreck Shore as being one of the worst levels from the game, but after doing this list, I realized how underperforming it really is compared to the rest of the game, and the rest of the series, for that matter. Um, it's just not spectacular, really, is all I have to say for it. I mean, it's a decent second level. It introduces Dixie Kong, which is my least favorite of the three Kong, um, uh, side buddy Kongs to use. Diddy, obviously, being my first, and then Cranky Kong being way better than Dixie Kong, I think. Even though Cranky Kong does require a little bit more skill. I just feel like Dixie Kong is just too slow. And the only time you're really going to use her ability is if you f fuck up a jump. Um... The only reason I'm even talking about the, the the animal buddies is because not animal buddies, uh, the, the 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 side kongs, is because I really don't have anything else to say about shipwreck shore. Um, it's fine. The ending where you ride that raft is cool, I guess, but this is just a this is just a sleeper pick, really. See, Winky's walkway is a little weird because I think the fact that it's kind of a worser level kind of makes it a better level. The fact that there's really nothing happening at all kind of just makes this an eerie, empty level that you forget about every time you play the game. So when you get to it, it's just like this ghost of a level that just exists in its own cavity. It's very strange. See, Forest Frenzy is a pretty damn cool level. Problem is, though, it's an auto-scroller. And if you're an auto-scroller, generally, you're like D-tier, right? Uh, but this one, this one makes it to C because it does some cool things. Number one, it's just fun. Um, having to replay it after you die over and over again can get a little boring because it is an auto-scroller and it does take a little bit of time to finish. But the level itself is actually pretty fun. And it also has one of my favorite skips to do in the game, which you do an infinite roll jump, which I'm not even gonna attempt to describe. But if you know, you know, it's cool. Clobber Carnage has some good arguments to be the hardest level in this game. In my opinion, it is by far the hardest level in this game. Animal Antics has a hard part at the end of the level, but as a whole level basis, this is the hardest level in the game. And it is a secret level, thankfully. I'm glad you're not required to beat this to beat the game, because holy fuck, there'd be a lot of kids that did not make it to the final boss. Let me tell you. Um, this level is on a pretty big... Uh, balance between fucking stupid fucking fucking stupid fucking horseshit and um wow that was my fault i should have tried a little bit better it more so lands on the fucking stupid motherfucking stupid fucking stupid fuck horseshit side but there is a little bit of uh human error here um the barrel timings are fucking ridiculous on some of these shots Barrel Shield Bust Up is just such a weird level, and I don't really have a reason for not liking it that much. I just kind of don't. It's just not very fun. You'd think that, you know, you have to take cover behind monkeys throwing shit at you, kind of like bullets that you have to use a shield to dodge. But then you find out that the whole level feels exactly the same all the way through, and it doesn't really do anything unique or new with the mechanic at all. It's literally just stay behind the barrel and you won't die. And then you realize, oh, this level kind of sucks um but it's still you know you you have to pay attention it is easy to slip up so at least you're always uh doing something it's it's not a boring level it's just a it's just a monotonous level it's just the same whole way through but it's not boring it's just i don't know it's not one of my favorites title terror starts off with a really cool seeming gimmick but it quickly turns from really cool to oh my god this is annoying as fuck i want to play a different level um, if you take your time, it's not as bad, and the atmosphere is really good to look at while you're going slow, but the fact you kind of have to go slow uh, kind of makes me not want to re ever replay this level as much. Um, and the insta-kill from the tsunamis in the backgrounds, it's a little much. It would have been fine if it just did a damage, 
point, but no, nah, that shit insta kills you, and it's like, oh my goodness. Now, Shifty Smasher looks cool, but um, yeah, that's about it. It's just open, close, open, close, open, close, open, close, over and over and over and over and over again, and there's a lot of waiting. And then when your opening opens, you rush through, and you're waiting again. And um, I don't hate it, um, but it's just not very engaging. And I never really feel in any real danger because you would think getting smashed would be an insta-kill, but it's it's not. You don't die instantly. Um, you just take a hit point away. So really, the sense of urgency is even less than you'd think. Um, the part with spike ceiling, though, is a little bit bollocks. That part kind of, that, that's kind of stupid. Clingy Swingy is a fine level. It's just, that's kind of just the definition of a fine level. It doesn't do anything terrible, but there's really no flow here. It's kind of stop, go, stop, go, stop, go, which is a big old hell, fucking hell, fucking hell, fucking no for me. Um, I like to constantly keep moving forward, and you don't really get to do that with this one. You just have to stop and wait for the level to let you pass through, and that can be kind of boring. Um, you have to wait for the saw blades to let you through. You have to wait for the big-ass structured objects to swing forward and let you go. And half the time, there'll be a jump where you can almost make it. So then you'll try to jump it to save time. And then you'll end up dying, and then that'll waste even more time. And then you're just sad. This is a sad level. Even though I have current capers as the worst water level in Tropical Freeze, that doesn't mean it's a bad water level. It just, it's the most uninteresting and least engaging one of the game. Um, its mechanic is unique, and it is different, but that doesn't make it interesting. Um, and I think that's kind of the problem, is that this level is just mediocre. You know, it's, it's just, it does what it's supposed to do. Um, it doesn't do anything wrong. But it's just not anything substantial or interesting enough to really say anything about it. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like Die Rise. It's just so nothing that uh, I, I don't really have anything to say. It, it just does what it's supposed to do. Um, I'm glad that this level is in the game. You know, like it does add some fluff to the, the water world of Tropical Freeze. But it, it's just, I don't know. Um, it's, it's just a... It's just a <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the footage speaks for itself. Does this shit look super cool? Nah, I didn't really think so. Gusty Glade isn't a bad level, but it's an inconsistent level. The wind is a little wonky. Um, I mean, it's 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 a cool idea that they went for, and it does it does its job well enough. It definitely feels different, but it's just it's not one of my favorites. Um, it's not a bad level by any means, but it's just a a bit inconsistent, a bit jank, um, but not in a fun, goofy, jank way, more of a, oh my god, I just died their way, that was really fucking stupid, um, it kind of jerks you around, it kind of feels like you don't have a lot of control, it feels like the level's more so controlling you than you're controlling the game, which is never a feeling you really want to have, um, but, you know, it's fine, I mean, it gets a little bit of bonus points because it uses that fucking super fire Enchanted Forest song, Enchanted Forest Interlude, I think the name of it is, Forced interlude, yeah, that sounds about right. That song is, oh, oh, that song is, that song is gas. This whole haunted forest aesthetic of this world is so fucking good that it almost makes me like this level a lot, but I just simply can't. I don't hate it, but it's just a bit silly. Five Monkey Trial is a cool theme for a level, but I just don't think it translates very well, and I think it is kind of a lackluster um, world 8 temple level. I think it's way too easy to be the second to last temple level in the game. Um, there's no real reason to ever come back and play this one. Each of the five trials is just really basic and easy to comprehend and understand. Um, there's almost no challenge to this one, especially if you have Diddy Kong. Um, I just don't think that this level really hits any mark at all. Um, but, you know, it's still cool in its own right that you're doing five different trials, but I just don't think the trials are nearly expansive and hard enough to really be anything of note. Um, which sucks, because this seems like it would be such a fucking cool baller level, but unfortunately that's just not the case. Boab Bonanza is such a weird level, I don't even know if I said its name right. Um, a lot of people probably have this as the worst or one of the worst Tropical Freeze levels, and it does have some decent parts to it 
but overall this is just one of the most lazy just un unfun levels in the game um but as you can see tropical freeze is just such a jump in quality that one of the worst levels is still up this high in the list it's it's that quality of a game where even the shittier levels of the game are still like decent levels right and so it's so hard to 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 compare these shittier tropical freeze levels to the rest of the series um but i think i think this is a pretty good spot because this really is just a, a very 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 boring and generic level um but it's it's still all right to play and there are st still some cool set pieces like the boulder chasing you at the very end but it, it's just nothing too unique really Canopy Canyons is a pretty decent introductory level to the blasting barrels in Donkey Kong Country Returns. But unfortunately, there's no real other reason to come back and play this level other than just to play an easy barrel level. However, the fun part of the barrel levels is the tricky and hard timing, so having a very, very, very easy barrel level kind of defeats the whole purpose of the barrel levels. Um, but for an introductory level teaching the mechanics, it's pretty cool. It's pretty good at doing that. And the end with the uh, falling totems on you at the very, very end is pretty nerve-wracking. You know, I always forget what Poppin' Planks really is when I come back and play this game. I always remember, what the fuck is the first level of this world again? And then when I play it, I'm like, oh yeah, this is a pretty little happy level. Um, but it kind of ends there. It's too... I don't know. It doesn't do enough to really make me feel any good about it. It's just a go-happy-go-lucky level. Um, that just makes you feel good when you play it, but, uh, it's never something you ever really need to play again. Um, it's just a pretty, um, bridge level, as in a level where it's a level you play to get to better levels. But, there's nothing bad about it, it's just not as great as the rest of these. Literally, the only good part about this level is the fact that it's a rocket barrel level. It's easily the rock, the worst rocket barrel level, unless we're talking about Rocket Rush from DKC3, but we're not. That's some weirdo shit, and I don't count. The fact that you have to play this level three times, three times, is a travesty. To get one, two secret endings, and then the official ending to get all the levels, it's it's torture. It's so bad. Why? Out of all the levels to make you play three times, why this one? I was bored after playing it once, and that's the worst thing about this level. It's just boring. It's just the atmosphere is good, obviously. It's a it's a tropical freeze level, but god damn, this this like how do you make a rocket barrel level boring? Like it's still good, it's still fine, but fucking hell is it long and it feels so slow because it's not even that hard. It's easier than Rodent Ruckus, which is a whole world before it. So what the hell happened? If you play weighty way how you're supposed to, then there's a lot of waiting involved. And I don't like that. But there are some jumps that you can kind of do the roll momentum bounce through, which you'll see me do quite a few times in this gameplay here. And you can skip some of the slower sections of this level, which I really do like. Um, but if, you know, like you're playing the way the level was intended to be played, it is a little slow and it is a little bit of a slog. And some parts you can't speed through and you have to play the slow way. Um, which is a little annoying and just the whole theme of the level where like your weight distributes against platforms and you have to go this way to make this one go up and this whole seesaw back and forth thing um, it's not really my favorite to play it is a cool and unique idea though the Donkey Kong Country 2 version of Torchlight Trouble is back with Glimmer's Galleon of course it's a little bit shittier because um, well for one it's just not as fun of a level but for two it's because it's a water level However, I do think that this is one of the cooler water levels from the original trilogy because um, it's instead of more of a, of a path, you have to like kind of find it. It's like an escape box in a way. It's like a maze. Um, you're, you're more so figuring out the level rather than beating it, if that makes sense. And I think it is a very interesting way to do a water level of having it this big ass maze. Um, especially compared to the water levels we've looked at so far, where a majority of them are just a straight, boring path. Um, this one does kind of shake it up a little bit, and I think that definitely makes it stand out. Um, and just the torchlight gimmick is pretty fucking, you know, cool too. It was cool in Donkey Kong Country 1, it's cool in this game. It's just, uh, it still blinds you when you uh, turn around, which is not great. 
Um, and then the end of this level has a little little porcupine that can kill you, which uh, is not cool. Fuck that guy. Trick Track Truck is a fine auto scroller. It's not great. I'm glad that it has a shortcut that lets you skip the entire level at the beginning because I don't really like it that much. Um, I think this exact same level has a much better concept and execution later in the game, which we'll get to later in the list. But this one is just... It's its not bad. You know, it's fine. It's okay. It's alright. Um, it can be fun if you're playing it for like the first time in like 10 years, but replaying the game every now and then, this level... It's just not great. Um, but it's not a bad level, it's just, I mean, mid, really. Even though Donkey Kong Country 3 easily has the worst, like, gadget levels, and by gadget I mean, like, mine car, roller coaster, rocket barrel, shit like that, even though it has the worst set of those levels, um, this one is still decent. Um, even though the pipe mechanic is a little, uh, janky, it's still, it's still fun to get, like, the quick drop before you get hit by a zinger and shit. Um, actually, I think they're called buzzes in this game. I don't know why they change shit all the time, but that's just what it is. Um, but just, like, dropping down before you get hit by a bee is pretty fun. This one can be pretty crowded, and that can make it pretty difficult, but it also makes it, like, a little wonky and just weird. And it can be a little bit frustrating when you get hit sometimes because the, just what you're supposed to do isn't immediately clear. Um, but this one's still pretty fun. I mean, I, I, I really like the minecart roller coaster type levels. So, I mean, obviously I'm going to rank it a little high, but still this one can be a little fucking wonky. Pothole Panic in itself is pretty boring and bland level, but I do think it does deserve some flowers for having all four of the animal buddies in the game present in this level. So it's kind of like a scuffed animal antics where you just get to use all four animal buddies if you find all four. Two of them are in your face and then two of them are kind of out of the way to find. Um, but I'm sure if you find, if you try to look for them enough times, you'll get them, Tiger. Don't worry. Um, but you know, in itself, the layout's pretty drag, pretty glum and blah. Um, there's not really a whole lot going on. You got the purple barrels that throw bombs at you. I think they're only in this level and they really don't do much of anything to be important really at all. Um, but you know, I'd rather have them than not have them at all. So, I mean, at least there's a unique enemy. Um, really the only thing that keeps this level standing out in any way is the fact that you get all four animal buddies. Other than that, this level really doesn't have anything going for it at all. Even though Pirate Panic is definitely the worst pirate ship level in the game, it's still not a bad level. It's quite a good one. I do like how it has little buttons, like the letters of the buttons on the controller spelled out in bananas, teaching you how to use these different buttons that weren't really in the first Donkey Kong, because this is Donkey Kong Country 2, so it's kind of teaching you um, how to use the new game's mechanics, uh, especially with Rambi teaching you the, uh, the Animal Buddy's new second ability, um, which was new to this game, and you even have to do it to enter one of the secrets. Um, it's just a, it's just a nice level, uh, but unfortunately, just the other pirate level, the other pirate ship levels are just way better. It's not really this level's fault though. It's just a pretty, pretty fucking cool level gimmick. Theming wise, Millstone Mayhem is a super cool level. Gameplay wise though, it's a little mid. I mean, it's cool enough to be like cool, but. Um, I think the theming and the atmosphere of just the, this abandoned temple is what carries this level, personally. I think it looks really good. Creepy Caverns is a pretty cool level. Um, its gimmick is pretty straightforward. You got the barrels that appear and disappear, similar to the ghostly ropes with the same face from Donkey Kong Country 2 that appear and reappear. And, um, I don't know. It's okay. Um, they obviously switch up the mechanic a little bit halfway through, um, cause the, cause the barrels start rotating in different directions. So they do kind of, um, make it harder in that regard, but once you understand the mechanic, it's pretty easy to just completely get by this level without fucking up. Um, but if you do try to rush through, you probably will end up dying, uh, which you kind of have to take your time with, which I don't know. I'm iffy. I mean, I understand trying to get your timings right with barrels, but at the same time, I just always like moving forward. So it's kind of hit or miss for me. Um, but I still think it's well, it's well designed and it's a pretty cool mechanic. I won't lie. And for the final, and for the final world, it's decently challenging too. 
Even though jungle hijinks from Returns isn't as good as the original Donkey Kong Country, it's still pretty cool. You start off by beating the shit out of someone, and not only is that a cool way to open a level, that's a cool way to open the fucking game. Um, but just, you know, as a first level, it's very easy, it's very simple, um, but it's just so very alive, and you just kind of get immersed in this new world, in this new kind of return of an old world, and it's just so modern, and it just looks so nice, even for the Wii. It's just such a just a beautiful scenery and the gameplay is is a little basic but you do get uh blasted by a barrel into the background at one part which is pretty cool um i don't think a single level in the old games did that i don't even know how they would be able to do that so that's kind of showing off it's new newer technology to be able to do shit like that and there's secrets hidden all over and you, you can go into the cave like the first game. You can go back into the house like the first game. It's just a very nostalgic feeling level, and it's very fun. I really loved the atmosphere of Main Brace Mayhem with the nice cloudy blue sky. Um, this is really the only vertical level in the game that has like a peaceful kind of atmosphere. All the other ones are like just harsh climates and just terrible places to be. Whereas this one just feels like a nice breeze strolling up the sails of a mountain, uh, not of a mountain, I don't know why I just said a mountain, of a pirate ship. Although this is a pretty goddamn big pirate ship. It might look like a mountain, I don't know, I've never been there. Maybe I should go one day. Temple Tempest is another level that kind of comes and goes and you forget about it as soon as you beat it. Um, it's really just the same gimmick, the whole, the whole level, you're just running from these big ass hamster wheels. Um... But I do like levels where you have to rush forward, you just get to go fast. And this is definitely one of those levels from the first game. Um, but it's just, it doesn't really have any staying power, but it's a decent time while you're beating it. Uh, it doesn't do anything terrible that makes me hate the level, it's just a, just a passing by point. You know, you're about middle, middle of the game, damn near. It's just, I don't know, it's alright. Title Trouble is actually surprisingly quite a bit of fun. It doesn't even do anything great or crazy, um, but just the contrast of water and land is surprisingly fun to play with. Even though there is quite a bit of water, it doesn't really feel slow like a normal water level generally does. And you can even unlock a secret uh, unguard um, swordfish to kind of even make it even funner to go through with the uh, swordfish. Um, even though it's not a very hard level at all, it's only the third level of the game, having a cool little help from the uh, animal bonus buddy, um, I don't know, I think it just makes the level come together pretty well. Uh, there is one bonus game that's a little stupid though, you have to use Kitty Kong's bounce mechanic, which you're never really taught how to do, and I always thought that was a little stupid, but I'm not gonna count one entrance to a bonus game against the level, I mean, that's just dumb. Squeals on Wheels is just such a unique concept of you have to eliminate all the enemies throughout the level to pass through. And I think that it's a pretty fun gimmick, um, but I don't really think it's as fun as it could have been as a mechanic. But I think since it's early on in the game, they kind of kept it toned down and a little bit simpler, which I understand. I can respect that. Um, really, my favorite part about this level is that there's a trap door at the top of the level, so you climb all the way to the top and then you just... There's like a, there's like a, something that you haven't even really been paying attention to. It's a contraption to bring you all the way back down to the start of the level. And I also like that the exit of the level is right at the start of the level. So you see the locked door and you have to climb all the way up and climb all the way back down to uh, exit. And I just, I don't know. It's like a cool little puzzle Rubik's Cube kind of level. And it's pretty cool. Crockhead Clambers, uh, an all right level. You know, you got the plants you jump off from, uh... They're like little vines. I don't know the name of those plants. Are they called cattails? Uh, I don't know what a cattail is. They kind of remind me of the cattail from uh, Plants vs. Zombies. I know in Undertale those plants were called water sausages, so I don't know. I'm just going to call them the Donkey Kong Country 2 vine plant from the lily pad in the water that you jump on, and then you jump on the crocodile heads. Meanwhile, these bees and similar vultures try to kill you. Now, if you've never played these games, that just sounded like a, like I just said nothing. Like, I just sat there. I said a bunch of something without saying nothing. And that's pretty much this level. A bunch of something that's not really nothing. Uh, the crocodile heads are a little bit more interesting in this level, though, compared to Hothead Bop or Hothead Hop. I, it makes more sense if it's Hothead Hop because of three H's. I'm pretty sure it's Hothead Hop. Actually, looking at it now, it's definitely Hothead Hop. But they're more interesting in this level because they're on a timer. So if you don't do them fast enough, they'll disappear and then you'll just die into the abyss of the swamp. Which does add a little bit of a stress test near the end of the level. Which, 
you know, I do like a good stress test. Um, especially on a level that's a little bit laid back like this one. Um, it's just it's just a pretty mid decent level. It's it's pretty good. Clapper's Cavern is a pretty cool level. Um, I like the mechanic way better here than in Lava Lagoon, whereas the um, the temperature changing seals actually change the gameplay of the level. Um, having to run up on the ice and use the ice physics and hurry up before you get dropped into the water with the pink fish. It's pretty cool. It's just a constant stress test and you're just constantly trying to get to the next section without getting dunked in water like a fucking carny in the dunk tank. Um, but that's really all this level is and it's not super long. It's not super memorable. It's just slide on the ice, get past the ice, jump on the seal. Um, but, you know, it's cool for what it is. It's a nice little midway level um, through the final world. Um, it's a pretty, it's a, it's not super hard, but it's not like super easy either. But it, it is a little bit more relaxing compared to the other levels, even though you're fucking stressing through it. Um, you're, it's still one of the more relaxing levels, which kind of just in general tells you how the final level of this game is. It's fucking tough. The fact that a fucking scary ass monster waiting to eat you in the water is a relaxing level. Fucking, it should tell you something. Misty Mine's a cool little level near the end of the game for Donkey Kong Country 1. Um, just throws a lot of enemies at you, um, but they're not really hard to kill, so you kind of just feel like you're triumphantly getting to the end of the game. You're beating this huge conquest of the Kongs, um, and you're about to go to the final boss, but you got a few more levels left. But uh, it also could be a ploy. It could be a trick, because the upcoming levels can be a little tricky, so this one kind of being easy to set you up is a little bit of a dickhead. Fuck you, Misty Mine. You're an asshole for that. Creeping Clasps is definitely a weird one, but it's also a pretty fun one. Um, I don't really understand why they decided to make this level the last boardwalk level when the whole point of the boardwalk levels was the ability to, you know, swim in the water. But you don't even do that in this one. You just climb on ropes the whole time. But I don't know. I like the level, so I'm not going to complain about it too much. Um, the little red barrels, I don't know their name, but, um, I like, they, they, they can get you pretty fast. Uh, they start off climbing pretty slow at the start of the level, but by the end, they can speed up quite a bit. Um, and this level's pretty short, too, so it don't really last too long, but while you're here, it's pretty fun. It's pretty nice to kind of, uh, bob and jive and juck and duck the, uh, the, uh, little red barrels trying to explode on you. Oh, my God, that didn't sound right. Uh, but, I mean, I uh, guess that's more incentive to dodge them, because who the hell wants to get exploded on all over the monkey face? No thanks. Crisscross Cliffs has a little bit of a goofy premise. You're just constantly bouncing on this infinite burst of barrels. And it does look silly, and it plays a little silly and wacky. Um, but, it, you know, it's still a quality level. Um, it definitely feels like a secret level. And um, I actually really like the greenery growing between the rocks on this one. The way the setting kind of looks with the cliffside and that amazing cliffside music. Oh my god. Um, yeah, this is just a pretty fun one. Um, there's not really a whole lot going on. You got a lot of jumping of back and forth, left and right, constantly moving up this mountain. Um, that's pretty much all I got to say. It's just a cool little wacky secret world level. You know, nothing super special, but it's just a cool quality level. It's pretty fucking fun. What better way to start off the first level of Tropical Freeze than by beating the shit out of an innocent airplane and then being thrown right into a water section? Which, you know, is just such a fuck you to Returns. Returns the only level to not have a water level, which I really didn't mind, but for the exact next sequel to open up with a water portion, ooh, just outshining it from the gate. God damn. Um, but really, this level is just pretty, you know, nice, easy flow going, just teaching you the mechanics of the game. Um, introducing the new pole mechanic, which is new to this game, which doesn't really change too much, but, you know, at least they're introducing. You know, you got the new enemies, you got, you know, just new level shit. Um, yeah, that's really all I got to say. There's a couple cool barrel sections, and the end's pretty cool with the camera work, but it's just an alright level. I was gonna rate this level lower because of just how disappointing it is, but on its own, it is a fine level. It, it, it does its job. But as the final level in the ice world from Tropical Freeze, this level is a huge disappointment. This level could have and should have been way better. But instead, it's just a mid-level. It's mid as fuck. Um, and, I, and I just hate that I can't even find anything really bad to say about it because it doesn't do anything wrong. It's just so just lacking, I guess. 
compared to what it should have been. I mean, like I said, obviously, it's still a fine level, and, and, and I have to put it this high because it is just a good quality level. But it's just so generic. Nothing about this level is really unique in a game full of uniqueness and creativeness. And it is just... It, I, 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 no, no. I'm sure there's one homie that really likes this level, and I'm glad you can, but I, I just, I don't, I, I can't. Oil Drum Alley's a cool concept, but it's just not as great as it could have been, which kind of sucks, because this could have been a really cool level. Um, but just the drums, like the oil drums, like just the whole fire gimmick, it's just not great. And then at the end of the level, there's just like spam of just the barrel drums and you have to do the exact same thing like three or four times and it does not get harder. It is literally just like the same five, six barrels that you have to jump on top of in time, but the timing is the exact same every time you do it. It's uh, the factory levels are very cool, but this one is easily the worst and it just doesn't really leave that good of an impression when you beat it hot head hops cool uh, first level of world 2 so again it's not too hard uh you would think that this magma lava hellscape looking level would be harder but it's really not it's a pretty easy level all things considered um jumping off and on the heads is really fun um but that's all you do the whole level so it does get kind of old by the end um there's really not much to say really like i said you're just jumping on the heads the green ones uh, don't bounce you as high as the brown ones, but that's really all the difference there is between any of the crocodile heads at all. It's pretty much the same generic gimmick throughout the level. But you do get the squitter, the little spider animal friend, which is new to this game. Uh, and you can play around with his mechanics a little bit, because he is easily the most um, high-tech animal buddy to use. He has the shooters and he has the web platforms. Uh, which you don't really need either in this level. It's just kind of a little training ground for you to kind of learn with him um, It's you know, it's a nice little beginner friendly mid-level, but that's kind of what it needed to be so can't hate on it too much It's pretty fun Barrel Bayou is one of the more forgettable levels in this game, but it's still pretty fun I do enjoy playing it when it comes back up But I never really think of this level or remember this level until I beat it and I immediately stop thinking about it when I do beat it but it's fun. Um, it has the controllable barrels. Like, you don't move them, but you can rotate them on your own, which is a fair enough gimmick. I don't remember how many levels that comes back in. I know it comes back in at least two more, I believe. Um, but as for this one, you know, it's just introducing a cool little mechanic. It's a pretty basic level. And the swamp theme, while it's cool and atmospheric, it is one of the lamer themes in this game. Um, but... Uh, and when I say theme, I, I meant like the, the, the look of the level, although the song is pretty basic too. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's okay. Um, like I said, it's just pretty forgettable. But it's not bad. You know, it's fine. I like Conveyor Rope Clash, but there is a little bit of some jank and bullshit with it. The way the ropes kind of propel you super fast into bees that you can't really see coming is not very beginner friendly at all you kind of have to memorize some sections or just go incredibly 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 slow and trying to go slow on the ropes that are constantly pushing you forward at like Mach 10 speed is just kind of jank um but it's still a pretty solid level it feels really nice to get those fucking quick time fucking air time dodges in and it is a fun level it's just very jank and you kind of got to get some practice on it Fiery Furnace is easily the most forgettable secret level in Donkey Kong Country 2, but it's still fine. You know, you have the movable barrels. They're all right. Um, there's really, that's all there's really going on here. It's a pretty tricky level. It's not super hard, but it's just tricky. Um, you pretty much all you're doing is you're just moving the time limit barrels because once they, once you run out of time, that motherfucker's blasting you right in the lava if you ain't ready. And, um, yeah. That's pretty much all I gotta say. It's, um, it's alright, you know, it's whatever. It's, uh, doesn't really stand out in any way. Um, literally any other level could be a secret level compared to this one. I mean, this one's... The only thing that makes it really warranted of being a secret level is just that it's pretty difficult, but that's about it. Furious Fire is a pretty alright level. I mean, it's pretty fun. It's pretty decent. The big-ass fireballs are definitely something you gotta look out for. And this is in the final world of the game, so it is decently tough. But 
one thing that I do kind of notice with all of the Lava World levels and Furious Fire in particular, that's why I'm mentioning this on Furious Fire, um, they just all kind of feel similar to me. Um, you know, going one by one, they obviously do have different features and they are different levels. But when you just go back and think about the Lava World in this game, all the levels just kind of blend together as one level. Um, with one exception, I think. But, um, I just think Furious Fire, it's not the worst level in this world, but I definitely think it's the most lacking when it comes to importance. Like, if this level was not in this world, um, at all, I don't think that it would feel left out. I am, I don't think that the game would lose anything by not having this level. And it's not even because it's bad, it's just not really anything substantial. Um, but it, it, yeah, I mean, it's still fine, and it is a decent introductory to the lava world. I just find it so just unappetizing, really. Crumble Cavern has a really, really, really good atmosphere, but the gameplay is just all right, kind of good. Um, it's not bad, and it's not lackluster, but it, it just never really sticks with me whenever I, I beat this game um, in a game full of fantastic levels. This one just never really... Um, sticks with me at all. Um, the end with the barrel is also a very peculiar section. Um, I don't really know why that was put in the level. Um, but, but you know, it, it's still a very, you know, good time here playing this level. You know, there's some interesting stuff, but it's, it's just, it just flows kind of weird. Vine Valley is a cool introductory of the forest levels returning, but... For the most part, um, there's no real reason to come back to this force level compared to the other ones. But that doesn't quite mean it's bad, it just means the other ones just outshine it in every way possible. However, I will say though, that this one does have some fun sections where you don't do nothing, but you just swing on a big ass vine from one section to another. And it, you know, it's no real gameplay, but it just looks cool as a spectacle, just this big ass swoosh across the screen. And um... Uh, the intro of this level where you're, you know, climbing out of the cave into the tree trunks of the forest is mwah, such a classic fucking scene in the level. And, um, I'm actually kind of glad that they didn't go overboard with this one because the vine swinging mechanic is a little bit hard enough for new players to understand what's going on. So, even though this one has to be ranked low because there's not really too much going on, I am glad that they did tone it down for the first level. Because hot damn, some of these rope sections in these next levels are a little silly. Out of the three starting levels from Tropical Freeze, I definitely think Canopy Chaos is by far the best. Um, it definitely has its centric around Cranky Kong. It, I, I feel like that the way they constructed the level around Cranky Kong is the best of the three Kongs. Diddy Kong feels alright in his first level, and Shipwreck Shore definitely feels more like a Dixie Kong level. But Cranky Kong just feels like the whole level was constructed in a way to make Cranky Kong's ability just flow throughout the level. And I really, really, really just like using Cranky Kong in this game. And um, I just think that this level just flowing with his playstyle is just, it's so good. Um, then you have the classic, uh, the classic little um, original Donkey Kong intro hidden at, at the end of the level. Which, you know, isn't crazy or anything. I just think that's such a cool little set piece that a lot of people remember. At least I remembered it first time I did it. And it's the first level to have a secret exit, which is new to Tropical Freeze. It just has so much cool shit in it. it has some decent little barrel parts. Um, and for some reason, I always really like that section with the slugs on the trees. Because you could just ground pound the trees and then just make the slug just fly to his death. Um, that's so such a terrible thing to say out loud, but... It, it's it's fun i gotta admit it it's, it's cool even though gear getaway is the most forgettable rocket barrel level in donkey kong country returns that doesn't mean it's the worst it just means it's the one that you'll probably gloss over the most when thinking about this game and that's just because it doesn't really do anything to stand out really well um it's just a fun level that you play and you beat and you do it and you'll probably die a couple times but not enough times to really get too mad it's pretty just evenly based level. Um, I think it's a good basis for all rocket levels, but I just feel like most other rocket levels kind of have an extra oomph, you know, an extra thing that makes it cool, and this one just doesn't have that. 
and it's the second to last rocket level in the game so you can't even blame it for being early on in the game either because it's not it, i just feel like it should be harder and it should be a little bit more trickier and more memorable um be, because it is in the factory world of donkey kong country returns which makes it kind of stand out as a weaker level because it's just surrounded by good levels i really did expect more from this one unfortunately precarious plateau wants to be a rambi level but you're not forced to use rambi so a lot of the challenge you can just skip by just not using rambi and it just it's weird i mean there are some still some cool sections but i definitely think this level would have been a lot cooler if it forced you to be rambi um but it doesn't so you kind of can just skip most of what would have made this level harder by just rolling around and kind of dodging everything. Um, I don't know. This one's... Uh, I really do forget about this level almost every time I play this game. So I think that says enough about it. It's not bad. Um, it's just uh, it's just an, an anomaly, I guess. I don't know. It's, a, it's an odd one. The best part about Blazing Bazookas is that it comes right after Ripsaw Rage, so you actually get a breath of fresh air with a good level. But uh, apart from that, uh, this one's just pretty alright. It's pretty fun. Um, the, the whole mechanic of you just have to bounce on these barrels is pretty fun. Um, it's not really too hard. It looks a little tricky to do, but in actuality, you can pretty much just hold right and it, you'll pretty much just play the level. Um, when it comes to the bouncing sections anyway. And having to kind of dodge the barrels on the ropes can be pretty fun too. And plus I just like the little enemy. This little tiny ass crocodile holding this big ass bazooka. It's just a goofy fun level and uh, I don't really see anybody disagreeing with this placement. I, I think everyone can agree that this is just a cool little level. Ice Age Alley uh, is, a, is a quality level, but I find it to be more frustrating than fun. Um, the mini neckies in particular in Donkey Kong Country 1 uh, are pretty fucking annoying to deal with. And they appear in this level more than any other besides Neckie's Nutmare, which is a... Uh, um, I don't know if it's a GBA exclusive level or a Donkey Kong Land exclusive uh, level, but it's one of them. But it don't matter because it has nothing to do with this list. But there's just so many mini neckies in this level... And they're just so fucking annoying. Actually, there might be more in Elevator Antics. I, I don't really remember or care. I just know that there's a lot of them in this level. And they kind of ruin the level for me. Um, because you just got to wait for them to, to shoot. You can't hit them first. Because they're at like an angle to where when you're coming up to jump on them, you're jumping from down to up. So they will already have the chance to shoot them. And it's just hella annoying. This, that's the best way I can describe this this level. Very annoying, but it's still a quality level. It's not bad. It's just you got to take your time. The worst part about Bramble Scramble is it didn't bring back Sticker Brush Symphony, which I didn't even like very much. That's my hot take of the whole series. I don't even think that that's good. That that it's that good of a song, but it's a fan favorite for a reason. And you didn't even bring it back for the Bramble level? Are you for real? But yet you want to put it at the start of Twilight Terror. Despicable. I should put this level in, in fucking in the F tier right behind Poison Pond just because of the audacity to do that. That is just criminal. Um, but for the level itself, it's fine. You know, it's it's um it's fun. The atmosphere's, you know, it's fun. Um it, it really does feel like you're in the middle of a fucking a thorn bush. Um, I think it does do the atmosphere very well. I kind of like the way the level kind of unravels itself as you play it. Um, but but j j just 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 the absolute criminality of, of just the sicker... I don't even want to think about it anymore. Let's just move on. C-Stack Attack is alright. Its main kind of mechanic, I guess you could... If it, if it has one, is that there's a lot of enemies in the background trying to kill you by throwing shit in the foreground... You know, there's some switches that when they step on them, they swing like a fucking spiked bat thing. It's not a bat. I don't even know what you call it. Like a fucking rafter full of full of horns that they fucking try to swing at you to kill you. And those can be a little fun to dodge. Um, this one has a lot of waiting. I definitely feel like, like you're waiting for the bombs to blow up. You're just waiting for the fucking rafters to swing a certain way so you can get through. Um, you know, it's not very interesting 
um, but it's not bad. Um, I don't really think it's very creative either. I just think it's a pretty generic level. Um, I wish I could say more, but I, I really don't. Um, there's that fucking, there's that guy throwing bombs at you halfway through the level. That's kind of like the, um, the mouse fight from Super Mario Bros. 2. Um, that's pretty cool. So, yeah, that's about all I, that's about all I got for this homie. Orangutan Gang is known for being probably the prettiest and most gorgeous level in the game, and a lot of people talk about it because of how pretty it looks. You will never hear a single soul in their life talk about how shit some of these fucking enemy placements are. God damn. They'll, they'll fucking get you on this level. There's one specific little crocodile that always jumps up and gets you right off screen, and he's a little annoying fucker. And this level has like six secrets you gotta find. What the hell's going on? Um, but generally though, it's not too bad. It's just a little, it's difficult. It's a little goofy at some points, but it looks really good. And it's the last jungle level of the game. And it introduces a new enemy, which throws barrels at you, which is pretty cool. Uh, you know, old, the old original Donkey Kong throwing the barrels. This new enemy's throwing barrels. It's just, it's just a nice level, but it, oh, god damn, does it piss me off sometimes. Fireball Frenzy's alright. Um, it introduces the factory theme, which is probably my favorite theme in the game. The music is fucking bomb as shit too, but just the whole atmosphere of the, uh, lava factories is just super cool. Um, and then for Fireball Frenzy itself, you know, the owl shooting the fireballs at you. Um, it's pretty cool how they shoot in from the background. Um, but apart from that, it's not really much of anything. It is kind of reminiscent of King K. Rule's fight from the first game. But other than that, it's just, it's just a good level. It's quality and it's fun to play, but, uh, there's no really reason to come back to it or play it, because, um, I think there are, uh, there's one way better factory level you can come back to that has fireball shot at you. We'll get to that later, though. Wonky Waterways is a pretty fun level. Um, it don't really do nothing extreme or grand, but it just has some solid cool parts throughout it. None really stick out as super memorable or anything, but it's just a solid level to run through. My favorite part is the end on top of the mountain in the background. You see the big old Donkey Kong holding the Wii Remote, the 8-bit Donkey Kong, which apparently is actually Cranky Kong. That's a whole can of worms that Matt Pat hasn't dove into yet. And if he has, well, I haven't watched that episode, and maybe I should. I don't know. Um, the only part that I really can remember, I know I just said this level don't have any memorable parts, but I'm a goddamn hypocrite and a liar. The only part I do remember that's actually pretty fun is the part where it's like progressively going in the background and you're like jumping over the spinny tiki saw things and like the gray rocky part is like tipping over and jumping to barrels and you know, I gotta say if you never played this game I just said a bunch of hubba lubba a whole bunch of nothing I've said that quite a few times on this video already but that really was some hubba lubba jubba lubba nothing kind of just like the rest of the things I have to say about this level hubba jubba hubba lubba hubba lubba lubba nothing I don't know we're going on to the next level though Damp Dungeon has such a cool atmosphere and just such a cool setting and feeling, but the gameplay of this level drags it down, man. It sucks. This could have been like an 8 or 9 out of 10 level in this game, but the gameplay brings it down to like a 5. The fucking long-ass spinning wheels you have to wait for them to turn are just so fucking slow, and the rest of the level is so fun and so good, and it looks so fucking immersive and it's just such a cool themed level and it's the only level in the game that kind of has this theming and yet the the fucking the water the, the water wheels just slow it to a fucking crawl the rest of the gameplay levels are super fun but then just the fucking the wheels why why did they have the wheels now i always remember blowhole bound to be a boring auto scroller level whenever i think about this game but after replaying it for this level in particular and analyzing it with my super scientific microscopic uh zoom x-ray goggles i uh come to find that it's really not too bad it's quite fun um you jump off the whale several times onto like ship platforming sections and the actual whale portions of the auto scroller really aren't too slow and you can use this blowhole to shoot you up to get some cool collectibles and to dodge some stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't know really why I thought this level was as bad as I thought it was. It's really fun. 
and it has really nice beautiful backgrounds all the all the beach levels do actually all these all these levels in this series do but the beach levels have some very nice backgrounds um yeah it's just a i, I just <laughs> i like this one more than i thought i would it's a cool auto scroller you won't hear me say that a lot but this is one of them Grassland Groove is easily the most overrated level in the entire franchise, and I can confidently say that. Um, but that doesn't mean it's bad. I mean, it's still up this high, so obviously it has some good redeeming qualities. Obviously, everyone goes to the visuals. Um, visually and atmospherically, yes, it looks fantastic. The problem is, though, the gameplay doesn't really match the level of quality that this level looks like it would have. Um, the gameplay, unfortunately, just plays like a generic Donkey Kong Country Returns level. And as you can see from this list, I absolutely love Donkey Kong Country Returns. Um, but this level just feels like a generic Returns level. Kind of like a King of Swing, um, Clinger Swinger, kind of just generic grab on vines and grass kind of level. Uh, which is unfortunate, because I feel like this level could have done way more shit, way cooler shit. But unfortunately, it's just kind of around the middle of this list, um, which is such a shame. Um, I think people overhype this level way too much, though. Now, Peaceful Pier is the level that introduced the rocket levels to the modern games. Now, I'm glad that they took the rocket of Donkey Kong Country 3's last level, and they're like, okay, this is a cool concept, now let's make it not dog shit. Now, <laughs> okay, that's being a little bit harsh, Donkey Kong Country 3. But back to Peaceful Pier. Um, this one's just a nice level. You got the nice ocean uh, seaside. I, I, I like the name seaside more. It's two S's. The double S, seaside. Don Mario Odyssey, seaside kingdom for a reason. Ocean side. Just don't come off the same. But you got the seaside in the background. And near the end, it starts getting all stormy. And you got the pirate ship shooting fucking anchors at you. And cannonballs and fireballs. And it's just a, it's just a, a, a fun level. Um, it don't do nothing too great to really set it with the big with the big guns of the rocket levels, but this one's kind of hard when you first get to it, so I give it a pass for being pretty easy. Because if you don't know how these things control, you're gonna have a hell of a time being precise with them. Deep Keep is definitely a level that will grow on you the more and more you play this game. That's kind of the water levels in this game and this whole water world. Um, the more and more you play this game and the more and more better you get with the water controls, um, you will come to like these levels a hell of a lot more. First time I played this game, I put this whole world in F tier. This shit pissed me off. I was dying all the time. Um, but now after learning a little bit with the controls and getting much, much, much better with them, um, you know, obviously I'm still not ranking it super high, but it's a very good introductory water level to the water world. Obviously, there were sections in earlier levels that let you introduce to the water gimmick and mechanic. I shouldn't say gimmick. It's not a gimmick. It's a mechanic. But this is the first fully-fledged submerged water level. And I think it is interesting enough and it's challenging enough to be a good introductory level. It is a little harder, a little bit harder than it should be. But since this is just notoriously a hard series, um, I, I, I'll give it a little bit of leeway for that. See, now, Floodlit Fish is a unique level in the sense that it's actually a fun water level. Now, it takes the light and the maze gimmick from um, Glimmer's Galleon, but it makes it to A, um, the fish isn't blinding you every three seconds, and instead of you always having light, it's more of like a doomsday timer, so you're constantly getting scared, and you actually have a reason to fear getting lost in the maze of the level because it might go dark and then you might get lost and die. Whereas in Glimmer's Galleon from DKC2, the light's always with you, so getting lost in the maze don't matter because the, the light's not going anywhere. Here, the light is on a timer, and you will get lost. This this level, it don't seem like a maze at first, but you'll you'll end up looping around a couple of times and being like, where the fuck am I going? And plus, it's an on guard only level, which automatically makes it better than it would have been normal norm, normally. Unguard is just such a homie, he makes the water levels that already kind of suck even funner. So when you have an actual fun water level with Unguard, well then it's just even funner. Um, I really like this one, and I also think DKC3 uh, water theme kind of fits with the deep, dark underwater theme more than all three of the games. I think this is the best water level in the original series by far, and the original trilogy when I say that. Um, 
obviously excluding Tropical Freeze, which you'll see some better water levels from that game coming up real soon. The last level in Donkey Kong Country 1, the big lead up to the big bad final boss, Platform Perils, does it execute its goal at being a great final level of the game? Yeah, I guess. Um, it's pretty hard. It's pretty tricky. Pretty intricate. You need to time your barrel throws. If you don't, you'll just immediately die because there's enemies in this level that can't die without a barrel. If so, if you miss your barrel, then you just have to die. Which can cause some pretty fucking frustrating deaths. Um, it's just a lot of like platform, like little tiny platforms that you just jump all over and it, it's just, it's not really like a level. Like this whole game kind of, the levels are like terraformed and then this one is like, it just feels like a video game level instead of like, 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 like a world. It's just like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It, I mean, it's still a solid. It's fine. It's whatever. But they definitely could have did a lot better for the final level of the game. Harvest Hazards has the unfortunate problem of being a decent level in a world full of great levels, which just makes it stand out as pretty lacking. Um, but, but as its own level, it is a, a good level. Um, one thing I do not like about this level, and it is a bit of a skill issue, but the way the wooden kind of like the uh the little wooden things on the wheels the way they kind of teeter totter and snap off and insta kill you off the edge that feels a little finicky to me me personally it, i just never really got the feel of how those things work because you're not on them for longer than two seconds at a time um so you never really get a chance to get the feel of them but this this uh, aside from that this level is pretty cool you got the claws grabbing in the fruits and throwing them up um, you get introduced to the world five enemies, of course, because this is the first level of the of the fifth world from um, Tropical Freeze. Uh, but apart from that, I really don't have anything to say. It's just a cool level that sets up the story of World Five, but you know, it's just the setup of the story. So obviously, the later levels in the world will get going a bit better. Minecart Madness is a cool level. It's a quality level. It's good. It's fun, and I do like that it's different compared to the other minecart where instead of jumping with the minecart you jump out of the minecart into other minecarts but it is completely overshadowed by the other minecart level the other minecart level is way more crazy way harder way more stuff is happening this one comes at like almost the end of the game and it's way too easy and it there's not really anything going on much at all um, I mean, you do have to make some sus jumps out of the minecart, but for the most part, it's pretty obvious where you need to go. There's generally banana trails showing you where to go. Um, uh, I never have found any trouble with this level. You hear a lot of people complain about the minecart levels. 99.99999% of those people are talking about minecart carnage and not minecart madness because this one is a cakewalk. I would assume because I don't walk on cake, I eat it, so I don't know how easy a cakewalk really is. Shoal Atoll has one of the most interesting and cool and iconic gimmicks from this game. However, the way it's executed is not super great. Now, the way this level functions is it kind of functions like a puzzle, like a dungeon. Um, problem is... You never really want to explore too, too far away because you have a breath meter. And so you're always keeping track of your breath. That's problem number one. If you're going to have a level where you have to explore, having a breath meter, it just sucks. Number two, no checkpoints. You can collect three, four of the keys. You're about to get to the end of the level. You die. You have to start all over again. And let me tell you, replaying this level after dying sucks. And this level is pretty hard, too. You don't really get a lot of fucking bonus hearts. Um, so once you die, it's just such a slog to get through this whole thing. Because you'll die a couple times for sure on your first playthrough. And just finding some of the secrets, and it's very easy to get lost. Finding some of the secrets can be super tough. Trying to figure out where the fuck to go. There's one part where you have to collect all the bananas in a row. And that ma opens up a magic secret little fucking portal to go somewhere. I mean, it's just... Um, it, it, it's, it's frustrating and it's a very cool gimmick and it's, and it's cool and it's fun, but it can be frustrating very quickly and it does take a while to beat. 
and i i don't know i just think if you're gonna have a level where it's a long journey of ex exploration i feel like you either gotta have checkpoints or you gotta make the level faster to beat because as it is right now there's a lot of loading screens throughout the level and it's, it's just it's just a, it's just a very slow very slow which sucks um i think this is the longest i've talked about any level on this list so far but it is just that unique um but that's why it's only up this high because it does have some gripes unfortunately would love to see this theme make a return though preferably a platformer level i don't really want another water one keep that no 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 thanks now platform panic has one of the most simple gimmicks in any platform game ever you jump on the floor the floor disappears now that however doesn't make the level bad it's actually quite fun it's just basic and it gets over pretty quickly but it is one of the tempo levels of the game which means that it's very challenging which you'll which will probably extend your playtime on here quite a bit um you might even start getting tired of this level because its difficulty compared to the rest of world one will make you want to actually kill yourself um but it's really not too bad and it does have some fun tight uh, timings but that's for all the temple levels in general. They all play kind of similar. Um, and this one's probably the most in the middle of all of them. Um, it's just pretty simple and basic. But it's still a quality level. I quite like this one. While Grip and Trip is a creative level, it's not a very captivating level. I mean, it's still good and it's fine. But it's in a world full of minecart levels. And it's just obviously the worst one. All you're doing, pretty much, a lot of it is just playing like an auto. You're just holding on this train, and you just drop at specific times, but you're not really doing anything else while you're holding on the train. Obviously, jumping off and on the train is cool, but there's a good portion of this level where you're not really doing anything. And, um, I don't know. It's another surf and minecart level, which I think are easily the worser of the three gadget levels in this game you got the rocket barrels the regular minecart and the surf minecart and i don't know i just think the surf and minecart levels are easily the worst of those three and this is easily the worst surfing minecart level of the game but it, it's still not a bad level it's just uh it's the worst in a game full of pretty decent ones the theming of everything being done by hands and handy hazards is pretty cool but the gameplay doesn't really change due to it just being done by hands um there's nothing really too special about the level other than its visuals um which does suck because i do remember this level being a lot more dignified and original but after playing it for this level i realized it's still a quality level i mean it's a factory level in donkey kong country returns my favorite uh world in the entire game um so obviously it's going to be a classic level but it's just not you know it just doesn't have that spark that i remember it having um and it, especially as the secret level of the world i just i don't know swoopy salvo is a very 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 hard level but it's also kind of fair kind of not there are some on-screen uh parts that you can react to but there's also a couple off-screen parts that can kind of get you and the only way you can even have a remote chance of not taking a hit is just going extremely slow but even then they just fly in at you so fucking fast that taking it slow might get you killed anyway it's um it's a pretty it's a pretty cool level though and it is pretty fun to just dodge and juck and jive and duck all these fucking um these sweeping swooping swallows coming to get you and kill you um but it is pretty unfair though it is really fucking hard elevator antics definitely grew on me um i used to not like this level at all and it grew on me a bit. I, I do quite like it now. I'm fond of it, but there are some pretty big issues I have with it. Most importantly are the glitchy ass elevators. You will see one literally coming up. You go to jump. Your jump takes you off screen. So then when you land back where the elevator would have been, it just completely despawned and you die. That's fucking silly. Um, I understand that it's because of the hardware it was on, but they should have thought about that. I mean, they should have made it to where where you jump, it has, like, ceiling that doesn't take you completely off screen. I really don't know how you fix that issue, to be honest. But that was a huge oversight. And the mini neckies, holy shit, they're pretty bad in this level, along with Ice Age Alley. Um, I don't mind them as an enemy, but in those two levels, uh, they're pretty rough. And the, and, the, and the mini neckies in this level have some silly little patterns that they can switch up on you. 
And that shit can get a little annoying. Canyon Canyon's uh, fine, I guess. Um, it's just a pretty solid uh, barrel blast level, uh, which you can never really fuck up. Um, it's, it's just a fine, decent little, little barrel level. That's really all I have to say. The atmosphere and the scenery is, like all levels in Tropical Freeze, beautiful. Um, that just goes without saying. Um, but as for gameplay, it's, it's, it's just a, it's just a barrel level. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, that's really it. Blast and bounce. You will die. You will rage. You will quit. You will come back celebrating happier than ever. You will throw a party, have a kumbaya, and then you'll realize that you're celebrating over a Donkey Kong Country Returns temple level that was completely optional that you did not have to play to beat the game, and then you'll feel like a goddamn fool. You'll feel like a bigger fool when you realize the one after this is the World 6 one, but we've already talked about a precarious plateau. For Blast and Bounce, there's really not much to say. Everything you see in is what you get. It's just a barrel level. It's pretty tough. Um, there's a few annoying parts with the bouncing sections on the tires and the tiki tongs. Um, but for the most part, it's uh, it's just a whatever. You don't really have much control over what you're doing. You just have to go with the flow with the barrels and the bounces. Um, it's really nothing too special, but barrel levels are always cool. So that's why it's up this high. Oh, and I meant to say perilous passage, not precarious plateau. That's a whole ass different level. My bad. Precarious Pendulums is the worst tempo level from Tropical Freeze, but I don't think that it's just because it's a bad level. I just think it's the most ununique. Like, it's still fun, and it's still fine, um, but it's just not very unique, especially when all the other tempo levels from Tropical Freeze are pretty damn fun and pretty damn fucking groovy. This one just kind of stands out as the Ugly Duckling. Um, it, it just... Um, there's nothing really to say about it other than you're just jumping, <laughs> which um, you can describe this whole series as. So, um, I mean, it's cool. It's f it's all right. Um, it's challenging. That's probably the best thing it's got going for it, that it is decently hard. But even then, I don't even think it's that hard for a temple level. Um, I, don't, I don't know. This one's just, uh, it's I don't know. It's, it's a weird, odd commodity. I don't know. Flutter Fly Away always stands out to me as the first hard level in Donkey Kong Country Returns. Obviously, if you're going for the temple levels with the secret collectibles, those are harder. But if you're just doing a normal playthrough, Flutter Fly Away is the first level where you will probably struggle uh, a little bit. Um, it definitely has that classic Donkey Kong Country 1 kind of challenge to it, and I like that. Um... You know, but for the most part, you're just on this level, you're just jumping around on these enemies that just, you can't even really call them enemies because they're not attacking you. They're just bringing you to where you need to go. And this whole level is just jumping on these flying enemies, bringing you all around this level. And um, it can be pretty tough to land on them. Um, I wish there was more to say about this level, but there's really not. It's just jump on the enemies and fly around. Um, I know it sounds simple and boring, but it's not boring, but it is simple. You just jump on the platforms and fly away. But um, it's a fun one, and you keep, you stay engaged the whole time. And the challenge definitely makes this one a lot funner. If this was an easier level, this shit would probably be a snooze fest. The mineshaft levels in this game are phenomenal. Donkey Kong Country 2 has some of the coolest level atmospheres. Um, and the mineshaft ones are some of the coolest. All three of them look so pretty and phenomenal. But Cannon's Claim, unfortunately, the first one is the worst one. Um, Gameplay-wise, there's a lot of barrel blasting, a lot of, a lot of bees, a lot of cannons shooting at you. Um, but it's a, it's a very weird difficulty spike. I feel the levels before it and after it aren't nearly as hard in this section of the game as this one. And it's not super hard, but it's definitely a noticeable increase. And this will probably be the first level that you get stuck on in this game. Um, it just kind of gets frustrating. Uh, but once you get that perfect run going where you complete it, it does feel pretty good to do it flawlessly uh one other thing i did want to point out and this is only this level only they have a collectible hidden inside of a secret bonus room now that's fucked up cannon cluster can be a fun one but its main gimmick gets kind of old because it's the only thing that happens throughout the whole level there's cannonballs shooting in from the background and it's pretty much just a uh, better fireball uh frenzy from dkc3 
Um, but it doesn't do much more than that. Um, it just feels the same from the start to end. And because it's a cool gimmick, I give it a pass. But it really doesn't evolve much. And the level just kind of feels the same the whole way through. It is pretty difficult, though, if you're not really paying attention. You can take some unnecessary hits here, and it might make you pissed off, and you might start to rush through the level because you just died, and you're going to end up dying even more. So slow your roll, cowboy, and watch for them goddamn fucking cannonballs, or else you're going to get hit, and you're going to get mad, and you're going to want to jump in the water. But I ain't going to help you. I don't care if you got hit by a fireball. That water ain't going to help you. Water's insta-death in this game. It's a little silly. I don't know why. It's the only game in the whole series you can't swim in. It's bullshit. Even though Tearway Toboggan has some wanky, janky, fucking wonky, stupid hitbox issues, and you can take some unnecessary damage from some bullshit sometimes, this one's still really fun. I love the way the background changes. Um, I just like the snow level themes in general, and this one having the dark snowstorm in the background just looks really fucking cool. It's very fast, it's uh, pretty frantic, it's just really fun, it's speedy. It's not too hard, but you also it's hard enough to where you kind of have to focus on what you're doing. And um, it's just a really quality level. Uh, the minecart levels for me are always a soft spot. Alpine Incline is a nice, short, fun, and sweet level. Um, I really enjoy coming back and playing this one, but it doesn't really do too much for me to talk any more about it right now. So that's all I have to say. Just This one's just pretty dang fun. Treetop Town's atmosphere is really nice. Uh, it just looks super pretty. And I just really like playing this level. It has the barrel, the barrel blasting that's pretty fucking cool uh i just i really like this one it doesn't do anything too great it just looks good it plays good it flows good uh but that's just all it, that's just all it does it's just a good level it's not great but it's just pretty good jungle hijinks is a very first level to the game and an extremely good first level for the entire series it does a lot of things good all the bonuses are pretty cool and satisfying to find I like that it has the first animal buddy, it has two secrets you can go look back, and it has the uh, little cave where if you beat the game and return back it has a cool little cutscene. Um, there's not really more else to say, it's just an incredible first level and an incredible start to the entire series. I really love the vibe of Ropey Rampage. I believe it's the only stormy level in the first game, and I believe it's also the only nighttime level in the first game, and it just looks really good. Um, it introduces the bees and the rope gimmicks, it has some cool secrets, it's just all around just a very nicely laid out level. Um, it doesn't do anything great or grand, but it is a very solid level. Doorstop Dash is a surprisingly complicated level for only the second uh, level of the game. You gotta hold down these levers to open the doors, and some of them have a little bit of tricky timing. I mean, for, for the second level anyway, not in general, but for the second level, you kind of got to uh, put a little bit of pep in your step to uh, get through some of these spots. And uh, the bonus games and the, uh, and the secret coin can also be a little bit tricky to figure out too. Um, this one's just a pretty quality level, and it introduces the mill theme, which is, is a weird theme, but I think it fits this game quite well. I think everything comes together in this level, and for it to only be the second level of the game is pretty solid. Even though it's only the third level of the gang, Gangplank Galley is probably the most beautiful and best looking level. Probably of the whole first three games in the series. Uh, just the sun setting on the fucking ocean in the background is just so beautiful and it looks so good. Um, the gameplay of this level is alright. You know, it's, it's cool, it's fine. It has that part with all the barrels where you use the invincibility to bounce up off those invulnerable enemies. But obviously the atmosphere and the um, the visuals of this level kind of propel it up more than the gameplay. But the gameplay is still good. Um, and then I like the end where it introduces the hooks where you jump off with your little monkey tail. Um, it, it, I, it's a really, f you know, nice, easy stroll through level with a very, very, very beautiful atmosphere. I really like this one. Springy Spores is fun to me in a weird way because there's nothing that really makes this level great or stand out in any way. It's just fun to play. You're just constantly bouncing around on these flowers and it's just um, engaging the whole way through. There's not really any part of this level that feels slow or drawn out or boring or lame. It's just a fun ride all the way through. Um, but at the same time, there's nothing I can really say to this level to convince you that it's a really good level. I just think it's a pretty solid one. There's liquid and gas, and I think this one's solid. Ghostly Grove doesn't do anything incredible, but it's just an all-around fire level. 
Um, it has, I like the theming, like the, the haunted forest background and atmosphere of Donkey Kong Country 2 is, is pretty fucking powerful. I really like the music Forest Interlude, such an amazing track. And I like the way the, um, the ghost ropes kind of are bright white light that kind of appear on the dark background. So you, they're just always standing out. Um, as a gimmick, you know, they're not too crazy. They appear and disappear. You, if you fuck up your timing, you die. But if you keep going forward and you keep going fast, you'll never have to wait for the ropes because the ropes actually load into the game as you arrive to them. So if you just keep jumping and going forward and going as fast as you can, you'll never have to wait for them, which is, uh, it's so fun to just speed through this level. I don't even know if that was an intentional design choice. So either A, it was an intentional design choice and it was a fire one, or B, it was an accident, but it's a pretty fucking good accident. It makes the level better than it would have been otherwise. Castle Crush is a cool little auto-scroller. It's a cool little neat little level. Well, it ain't nothing too great or amazing, but it's pretty fun. You know, it can be slow, but you, know, you just pay attention to what you're doing, kill all the enemies, dodge the enemy's attacks, and you'll beat it in no time. Um, what really stands out in this level, though, is the glitch you can do with the barrel. You pick it up, you put it down, you pick it back up, and then you throw it, and you just break the entire game. Sometimes even breaking the entire console if you're playing on original hardware. Um, and it's right at the start of the level, too, so you can just replicate it and do it at the start of the level every time. It's pretty cool. Loopy Lights is a pretty solid level. I wouldn't necessarily call it hard, but it's definitely tricky. Um, the new claptrap enemies they added to this level, that jump when you jump, can actually fucking nip you in the little booty. Um, they can get you. Um, but... As, as a level itself, I do like that they bring back the light gimmicks from like Blackout Basement and Torchlight Trouble, but it's just kind of like a shittier stop and go station. And I'm not saying that, that Loopy Lights is a shitty level, far from it. It's a, a pretty solid level, but when stop and go station is already in this game and it's way better than Loopy Lights and it's pretty much a copy of stop and go station, it just kind of makes the level a little bit lamer. But it's still, it's still a fun level near the end of the game, and I really do like playing it. It's definitely a highlight of the game, in my opinion. Now, I wish I could hate Prehistoric Path, because it introduces the really slow, kind of muddy, syrupy, kind of... I don't know what that's supposed to be. Um, but I wish I could hate this level, because it introduces it. But this level is just fucking super solid. The falling platforms can be a little bit annoying... But if you know what you're doing, you make you time your jumps, you won't fail. The skeleton dinosaur enemies are pretty fucking cool. I really like the one that's in his little wheelchair fucking thing that he springs up and shoots a fireball at you. That homie's pretty cool. And I like the barrel section near the end. It's not, you know, super long or anything, but it's just a cool little section. Um, pretty much that's how this level is. Just cool, short little sections that are all connected together. Kind of like a little timeline. I like this one. It's fun, and it's a cool way to start off World 6, the cliff, the cliff World, which you wouldn't even think would be that cool of a world, but it ends up being one of the highlights in this game. I just realized I called this level Prehistoric Path. It's not. This is Sticky Situation, which is just such a disgusting name for a level. Fruity Factory is a very sectioned level, and what I mean by that is instead of it all flowing together as one big level, it feels like small parts of levels combined together to create one big level with cool sections in between but honestly i don't hate it it feels super unique that way each each little section of this level just plays and feels and looks so different but they all use the same mechanics so it all just comes together pretty nice and it's wrapped with a little tight bow i just like the idea of these big ass cleavers trying to fucking kill you they are out for blood in tropical freeze holy hell not only did they take your home, but they want to kill you with a meat cleaver. Well, I guess it's not a meat cleaver. It's a it's a fruit cleaver. But, um, yeah, the, the spinny part where that thing's chasing you, the little fucking blender. You got the part where the fruit's getting ground up and you have to jump on the pieces of ground up, spun up fruit. It's just, it's just, there's just so much going on and it's just so cool. Um, I don't even have to say this. I haven't been saying this really about Tropical Freeze. I've said it here and there. But, the, of course, the, the atmosphere, the scenery, it's beautiful. It looks great. It, it just looks nice. It's, it looks fucking fantastic. Um, it, but, the, you know, it's Tropical Freeze. It goes without saying. Every fucking level in this game looks like that. So, again, I, I kind of just wasted my time, your time, his time. 
all of our time, father time, mother time, daughter time, son. Panicky paddles is surprisingly fucking difficult in this game. This shit will put you through the ringer if you are not prepared. I know it did me. I was not expecting a half water level in this fucking world, especially after World 4, but then you get this one and it kicks your ass. What the hell is going on? This level is called Panicky Paddles because it abbreviates to PP because this level sucks PP. No, I actually really like this one. The atmosphere looks really, 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 really good, especially in this one. I, I know it's Tropical Freeze. They all look really, 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 really good. But this one has like a fucking like a weird like fish market dojo kind of look. Like I don't even know how to describe what's going on. Like a fisherman's hut samurai dojo mix like I, I i don't know how to describe the scenery of this level other than it, it's just fucking cool and the game plays hard and it's fun and it flows together nice and it's interesting and just it's just it's just a it's just a cool level and a cool game and a cool world and a cool series it's all cool that's why it's tropical freeze because it's cool kong fuse cliffs is probably the weirdest level in this entire game you are climbing on a rope and you barely have any space to move and it's an auto scroller and there's some bullshit ass parts that are almost impossible to dodge and i still have it as one of the best levels in the game you are goddamn right you are literally this whole time you are always high alert you are always paying attention to what's going on you are always given ample time to dodge whatever attacks coming at your way you just have to be fast enough and smart enough to know exactly where to go but there's always a section where you are safe on this rope and you know that, and that's why getting hit pisses you off, because you know you could have dodged it, it's just a skill issue, and anyone who hates this level just has a massive skill issue. This one is super cool, and you get the, and you get the really good, I don't remember the name of the song, but you get the really good cliffside song playing during this level too, and it's just, it's just a super fun level, man. You just, always something's going on, you always gotta be alert. I really, really, really like this one. Um, obviously there's some flaws that are keeping it from being up in the upper echelon of the list, but as far as DKC3 goes, this is one of the best levels in the game. This one's really fun, fucking fun. I really like Blackout Basement for one, because it's just a fire layout. It's just a fun level. But two, the gimmick is so skill-based where if you know the level really well and you master the level, the gimmick will literally not affect you at all in any way whatsoever. Nothing about the gimmick will fuck you over. But if you're not good at the game, the constant turning to pitch black will fuck you up and will kill you probably quite a bit. Um, but I'm not good enough to where I can do the complete level in the dark, but I can do a good majority of it in the dark. Um, or at least try my best. I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I find myself pretty good at this game. But I then I go watch speedrun and yeah, I'm not as great as I would like to believe. But I, I think this is just such a quality level, and I think it's just such a cool and creative gimmick that really is just so simple, but it works so darn freaking good. Crumble Canyon, for the most part, is pretty mid, but the end where that big-ass face monster chases you is actually pretty cool. And even though the start of the level is mid, it's still just some cool quality platforming, so I can't even hate it too much. Really, this level just kind of suffers from bridge syndrome where it's just a level that you play to get to a better level, so you never really care or to think or replay this one. But it's still a quality level, and I think that there are definitely some pretty cool sections, and it's just a fun level to run through, even though you never really think about this level after playing this game. Um, the, the chase at the end is very fun, and it's even way more fun if you're going for the collectibles, because there's like three or four, like, little collectibles in just this tiny hallway chase section that if you get all four in one playthrough you it's pretty hard to keep ahead of that face without dying so the stakes are definitely high obviously you can cheese this section by just replaying the level a couple times and getting each collectible a different playthrough but that's the little baby bitch ass way to play come on now i don't really have a lot to say about crevice creepers it's just a pretty fun level um i really enjoy playing it um I think it flows together well. Um, it's the introductory of the cliffside levels in Donkey Kong Country 3, which has my favorite song in the game. Um, that doesn't really add the level, you know, really at all, but just that going along with the already good level just makes me just fucking really like this one. Um, it's pretty simple in nature, but I don't know. I just think it flows and plays together very well. The uh, red barrel enemies are back, and they're faster and harder to dodge in this one. 
and I think that just makes this level pretty fucking fun. Crowded Cavern is a level that stuck out to me a lot when I was little and played this game for the first time, and it's very memorable. Coming back to play it now though, it's not uh, anything too great. To be honest, the most thing I remember about it now is that bullshit ass puzzle piece that you gotta jump on the falling platform and jump back on to get it. That's fucking stupid. But for the actual rocket barrel section, I mean, uh, it's, it's fine. Um, the bats will almost never kill you. It's so incredibly obvious where to go to dodge them. And they're just kind of more of a visual gimmick than a gameplay gimmick. I don't think anybody has died to the bats more than three times. Um, of course, unless you're talking about the big mama bat at the very end, which has some laser bolts that can hit you, but you gotta... If you got your juke skills on, you'll be able to dodge her just fine. She shoots one big, powerful, big laser at the very end that all you literally have to do is hold down the number two button on your Wii remote and you will dodge it, so... I can't even say it's that cool of an attack. Like I said, everything in this level looks cool, but gameplay-wise, you're never really in any real danger. Um, and of course, any of the danger you're in, this level has like three or four checkpoints. I mean, you get a lot of checkpoints here, so even if you do die, you'll pretty much be guaranteed a checkpoint, unless you run out of lives. But you can buy lives in this game anyway, so I don't even want to hear anybody running out of lives in this one. Come on, now. Torchlight Trouble is too damn short. I'm going to have to speed up this talking part because... This level ain't long enough for me to talk for like a minute, so I gotta hurry up. Anyway, I like this level. I think the gimmick's cool. Lighting up the whole dark cave with the little birdie bird squawks. Love him. I'm glad he's in this game, but I'm glad he was uh, more important in Donkey Kong Country 2. But I'm still glad that he was cool in this game, you know, helping you with the lantern. Um, I just like the layout of this level. Like I said, it's very short. Um, I like the whole gimmick of just have needing help with your little homie. Um... There's really not much else to say other than this is just a solid, a solid, short, little, fun-sized little, little, little level. Squawk Shaft is a pretty good level. Sus name aside, it's the first level where you can play as or on Squawks. And um, I think it's a good challenge and I think it's a good introductory level to this animal buddy. Um, he's, it's just a fun, cool level. The, the uh, mining cave levels are super cool. And this one's just a really fun one. Um, the squawk section's really fun. That's what the whole level's kind of centered on. Um, but the part before the squawks part is fun too. Um, you know, just cool platforming. You gotta dodge the crooks, which though their little boomerang hooks us. One of, one, of, one of my favorite enemies from this game. Those guys are pretty cool. Um, there's not a whole really lot to say about this level other than it's just fun. It's cool. And it's really enjoyable to play. And I like it a lot. It's definitely the best level of, the, uh, of World 2 in this game by a long shot i just want to say for rock and relics ooh, love the atmosphere i know the atmosphere isn't everything but god damn does this level look so good with the fucking storm oh my god i love storms and video games oh they look so good oh my god but all right to the gameplay it's pretty fun um you're just hopping in water it is it is in the water world so you you, you are going to expect some water um but you don't spend a lot of time in the water in this one it's more of platforming and if you miss your jump you just land in the water um which is a kind of a fun reward where instead of just instantly fucking dying you just have to go for a little swim with some sharks um and then of course this level has a secret exit um which can be a little bit tricky to hit with cranky Kant's pogo jump this one's always a little bit uh tricky if you fuck up this one then you gotta go all the way back because there's no cranky barrel near the fucking 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 secret portal so you gotta run back and that does make this level a little more annoying but um you know apart from that this is just a pretty solid one um i don't know if it's worth being a secret level um but it is definitely a good level chain link chamber is the one level in this game where i can never confidently beat it first try um with a guarantee like i don't know what it is but i've just never really been able to grasp the uh the chain mechanic um in this level specifically um it's a pretty difficult level too it's right at the end of the game and so you just got all these gauntlets of enemies and it's such a cool level the way you're just climbing up this fucking tower and it's just you're barely scraping by and it's a cool level it's just pretty hard for me and a little bit inconsistent for me but i've also but i know that some people don't really have that big of a problem with this level I know it's just a me thing, um, and I still like it. It's just, uh, it's just, it just plays a little weird to me, but it's still very fun. I really like this one. 
Jungle Jinx is a pretty difficult level, but it's pretty fun too. It's the uh, first level in Donkey Kong Country 2 to be in the secret world, and it's also the first one to have the uh, the jungle theme, um, which has some pretty fucking fire music, we'll say. And it looks nice too. Um, but yeah, the secret world levels are way harder than the regular game, which is warranted, because you gotta go out of your way to beat them. But as for Jungle Jinx, you got the big ass tires you bounce on. They're pretty fun. There's some tight jumps here and there. But for the most part, it's just kind of warming you up to the harder difficulty of these secret war world levels. And I think this one does a pretty good fucking job. A lot of the secret world levels have some bullshit ass difficulty. This one's pretty fun and fair though. As someone who is severely arachnophobic and hates any and all kinds of spiders, Muncher Marathon doesn't fuck with me too much. Um, it does get to me a little bit because being chased by something, no matter what it is, is always creepy. It can be a fucking, uh, fucking big titty goth girl, and I'd still be scared if it's coming to kill me. Uh, well, I, uh, maybe not. I don't know. That's a 50-50 there. But when it comes to these spiders, um, I'm not too worried about them anymore because I'm just, I'm, I'm not trying to brag, but I'm just pretty good at this game. To where I can generally speed through this level and never have a worry in the world that I'm going to die because I know I'm not. The spiders will just never catch up to me at my play level. Uh, but for new players that aren't very fast or really know the, the rolling movement, uh, momentum controls. Yeah, I could see this one being a much cooler level. But since I know I'm never in any real danger, the coolness factor of this level definitely isn't as strong as it used to be. Slipside Ride is a interesting level. It's a good level. I don't want to act like it's bad, but it's interesting because it plays very different, I feel, compared to the rest of the levels in this game. It's almost entirely vertical, um, and uh, the ropes make you go up and down. It's like conveyor belts, but with ropes, which is weird because this game doesn't have conveyor belts anywhere else in the game, not even like in the factory. It just only on the ropes, which is very peculiar. Um, and just it's the only level in the game that uses this specific layout and theme, not layout. I meant uh, backgrounds and like graphics and stuff. Uh, theme, I guess would be the right word. Um, it just, it's just, it's, it just stands out so much. But like once you beat it, you kind of don't ever think about it again but it's not like forgettable it's just so different that like you don't even really lump it in with the grand experience that is donkey kong country it's just such an interesting level but it is a good one and it is a quality one and i think it fits in the world for ice world very well prehistoric path is one of the coolest looking minecart levels but gameplay wise it's not really too different compared to all the other basic ones um, you know, it's still harder and more challenging because it's in World 6, but as a whole, there's nothing to really keep you coming back to this one. It just kind of copies the wheel gimmick from the end of Bombs Away and to an egg in this one. Um, it's really not different in this one compared to that one really at all. Um, and I just think the whole level's, you know, just alright. I do like the little secret pockets you can go into to get them puzzle pieces. That part's pretty cool though. Windmill Hills is just such a nice, pleasant place to be. Like, I just want to go on a trip here. I want to take vacation here for like a week. This place is cool. It's such a long and expansive and just enjoyable, pleasant experience. Um, as a level itself, it's not too crazy. It doesn't do anything insane. But just it's just such a, it's just such a pleasant feeling all the way through this level. And this is a long-ass level. You're going to be here a while. And never one part of it feels boring or drab or anything. It's just always something unique going on throughout this level. Um, obviously, the predominant windmills. But, I mean, there's, a, there's like a fucking gondola section. There's like a fucking... Just a part where you're fucking fighting a fire pig. You climb up a building. And then you're like, at the end, it's like all falling apart on you. And it's just, what's, what, what's even going on? You don't know and you don't care. You're just enjoying it. It's just, a, it's just a cool time. The music in Wing Ding is one of the most memorable tracks from Tropical Freeze. And a game full of phenomenal music. This one just really resonates and it just, it becomes an earworm. Even though it's not even one of the better songs of the game. This shit, you will fucking hum this shit to yourself multiple times after you're done playing this game. I, I've done it. Yeah, ever since I've even recorded the footage for this video, I've been doing it. Um, but I've been doing that with a lot of songs. I've been recording a lot of, and playing and listening to a lot of Donkey Kong recently for this fucking video. This shit took me a lot longer to, to make than I thought. 
as the first rocket barrel level of tropical freeze this one really fucking stands out the theming is so cool of a fucking rats hidden hideout of cheese lair it's just so fucking cool and the gameplay is pretty fun it's surprisingly challenging for the introductory rocket barrel level um but uh it's just um it's carried very hard by its atmosphere and its theming um the, the actual gameplay itself isn't too captivating um like there's some hard parts here and there um but for the most part you're just kind of looking at what's going on and like the background and just just the whole goofiness of this level is really what carries it and i, I really fucking love the part where it gets all dark and you're like flying in the pitch darkness that part's super cool rickety rafters feels very unique with the whole level kind of having this um this woodworking uh i can't think of the word but it's like it's like a very craftsmanship ass um a tinkerer that's that, that I, th I think that's the word it has a very tinkerer style um f you know feeling to it kind of like clockwork where it just feels like every piece has a a, a revolving kind of portion it all just feels mechanically intact. It feels like a very artificial level that was, like, built. But not, like, I, I don't know. It's just such a weird way to describe the level. But it, it's definitely a good thing. I, I do want to say that. It is definitely a good feeling, the way that it works. And the way that it just flows together. And it just all, one one part activates one thing, which in return activates another thing. Which is, it, it just... It just feels like something's always activating and reacting to something else and it just feels like a very a very fluid and very good a good quality level it, it, it's a very it's a very strange way to describe this level but if if if, if you've played it and you can tell just by looking at it exactly what i mean it, it just it's 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 very fun that that pretty yeah it's just fun there you go now when i was little top sale trouble was my favorite level in the entire game but for me, the entire game was the first world and a little bit of the second world because this game was real hard. I didn't get I didn't get much past that. But still, this level is a great level. I love just the stormy, just atmosphere vibe. I love how dark it is. I love how you get Ratley, uh, new to this game, Animal Buddy. Uh, he's pretty fun to play with. His hitbox can be a little wonky, but you can get some major airtime with this dude. And I don't know, I just like the layout, I like the vertical climb, um, I like the atmosphere, I think it's difficulty is pretty good, last level of World 1. I, I don't have any complaints with this level really at all, it's a pretty fire level. Coindoser Clamber's difficulty definitely depends on which Kong you are using. If you are using Dixie Kong, this level is like a 6 out of 10 in difficulty. If you are using Kitty Kong, this is the probably one of the hardest levels in the game. These motherfuckers are rude to Kitty Kong. They bully that motherfucker. If you are not helicopter gliding over these guys, they will fuck your day up. And I kind of like that. I kind of like the fact that you constantly feel like you're getting bullied. I mean, this is one of the last levels in the game. And so the fact that they're just kind of harassing you and bullying you and damn near almost molesting you. I mean, it just it just feels it just feels ample fit. Um, the fact that it really doesn't feel like you have much of a chance. If you fuck up a jump, you literally don't have a chance. The idea of having to climb up the inside of a volcano while the lava is rising underneath of you is a trope that has been in a lot of games, and I don't think Donkey Kong Country Returns does it particularly well or originally, but I just think it's very hard to fuck up this style of level. Um, it's really fire in Kirby's Epic Yarn, it's fire in... A couple other levels that I can't, I can't think of any names of particular levels, but I will never really understand how you could fuck up this kind of level. And that's kind of my biggest complaint with this level, even though it's up as high as it is here. I just think they could have done more for it. I mean, it is the final level of the game, and I just think it just kind of just plays like any generic lava level. Um, of course, it's a good generic lava level, but it doesn't feel like end of Donkey Kong Country level kind of level. Uh, but it's still fine. And its challenge is definitely there. Um, I'm not going to complain about that. But just... I know it's kind of beggars can't be choosers. But I, I, just, I think they could have gone a little bit harder. Because what they did for the final secret level is way better than what they did for the final regular level. Which more people would be playing rather than the secret level. 
So, I don't know. That just kind of sucks a little. Horn Top Hop is another just one of those levels where there's not a whole lot going on, but it's just a pleasant time. It's just a fun time. Um, you can go really fast on this level, too. Generally, you're supposed to wait for the platforms, but if you're like me, like a little fucking speedy speedster, you can fucking blaze through this level with them roll jumps. And man, does it just feel so fun to perform them. And just the whole way this level syncs with the music and the blowing the horns, just the music with this level, too, is just, oh my god, it's just such a groovy time. Um, I don't really have a lot to say for this one. It's just a pleasant, nice level to play. Um, and I just, I don't know, I just like this one. It's cool. Levels like Bobbing Basalt remind me that not everything needs to be complicated and convoluted. It can just be simple and fun, and that's okay. The moment you start this level, it's exactly the same from when you end it, but it's just fun the whole way through. You're just jumping from platform to platform, and they sink under lava, and you gotta wait for them to pop back up. And that's what happens the whole time, and it's fun the whole time. There's a little bridge halfway through where you gotta jump underneath fireballs to get to the end letter. And that part can be a little tricky. Um, but apart from that, uh, this level is not too terrible um, difficulty-wise. Even though it is nearing the end of the game, I still don't find it super difficult. I think it's very fair and very fun. I, uh, this one is definitely a surprising one. You don't really remember this one, but when you get to it, you're like, hell yeah, that's a solid fucking level. In a game full of beautiful levels, Zipline Shrine really strikes as just one of the most gorgeous levels in the game. It's in the first world! They're packing this much heat in the first world? Are you kidding me? Come on now. The gameplay the gameplay is just super fun. You're on these zip lines. Uh, you're in like a temple setting, but it's not a temple level, so it kind of has more freedom to be a little bit more gorgeous and outside. There's some cool barrel sections. Um, there's some cool, like, little bouncy trampoline sections. Just every part about this level is just fun. There's just never really any, uh, low, boring, slow time. I'm trying to think of the word. Downtime. There's no downtime in this level at all. You're just always doing something, and it's really fun. I, god damn, I love this one. Um, I always, I always enjoy getting the secret exit to come to this level. And it's a secret level, too, so it, it feels magical in that way. It's just, oh, wah, to the blind shrine. Ooh, boy. Now, if you were to hear me mention Donkey Kong Country with water and a poisonous green background atmosphere, you might be thinking, oh dear God. But don't worry, don't be alarmed, this is no Code Red, this is no Poison Pond. This is Slime Climb, which is an actually good level. Now, the thing that makes this level so cool is, for one, you don't have to touch the water at all. I love water levels where you don't have to touch the water. Aquatic Ruin Zone from Sonic 2, fire level, you don't have to touch the water, you can stay up on the land. Same thing with this level, if you're good, you stay up on the land. But another reason you don't want to go into the water is because there's a little there's a little pink fish that's coming after you. And he's going to bite you. And he's going to get you. One way or another. He's going to find you. And so it's, it's a very stressful level because you're constantly under the pressure of this water, this liquid rising, trying to kill you. And there is a similar level to this in this game that is much better, I, I think, I feel like. But this one is still a very good uh, idea of this this constant monster trying to rise up and kill you and it's pretty fun um i generally don't remember this one that much but whenever i come back to this game uh, this is always a surprisingly fun one and it doesn't last too long either it's like the perfect length and i really do like the atmosphere of the like toxic skyline of the clouds and the ship sails I, i'm pretty sure this is the last uh uh sail level where you're climbing vertically on the uh, ship sails, and I think this was a pretty good send-off for this kind of level. It was really fun. As a minecart level, you already know Trunk Twister is going to be up kind of high on my list. And even though this doesn't do anything crazy gameplay-wise, I feel like the camera work on some of the sections just makes this level super, super interesting. The way it's like spiraling around the tree halfway through the level, super cool. Um, all the puzzle pieces and um, Kong letters... Are just pretty easy to get you know what you you can very clearly see what you're doing you just have to figure out how to do it and um it just everything about this level it just flows very nicely it's a very good introductory minecart level to kind of show how the wacky camera is going to play into effect in tropical freeze for these gadget type levels and i also love the cutscene halfway through where you um, fall down it's just a goofy little uh, comical section it's just i don't know this one's just classic i don't see anyone hating this level it's pretty pretty cool Slam and Steel has one of my favorite backgrounds in the whole entire game. The destroyed factory setting with the beautiful jungle in the background just looks so fucking beautiful. And I wish they used it more, but it makes this level stand out because it's the only level that has the background. 
Um, for the gameplay, it's alright. It introduces the purple electric enemies, which are a little annoying, but it's fine, I guess. Um, the slam and steal, obviously. The steal that slams. Um, it looks like it would insta-kill you, but it don't. Uh, but it's still scary enough to where you don't want to get hit with it anyway. And um, there's a pretty cool secret where if you purposefully get slammed by one, it boosts you into a cool secret area. I'm pretty sure I found that one time because I sucked so bad I got hit by every single fucking slamming steel fucking machine. And just one time it just didn't kill me. And I'm like, wow, that's a cool secret. And I've gone there ever since. Um, this is just a fun one. Itty Bitty Biters is one of the more memorable uh, levels from this game. Um, it's pretty themed around the biter enemies. I don't know the name of them. They might just be called Itty Bitty Biters. That's what the level's called. That might be what they're called. But you got the blue ones, the regular ones. You got the red ones, the big boys. And then you got the yellow ones, the annoying ass tower ones that fall on top. Yeah, I fucking hate those ones. Those ones take forever to fall. Oh my god. Um, but for the most part, this level has a little bit of puzzle here and there. But for the most part, you're just wiping out these fucking waves of enemies coming at you. And then at the very end, you have like a little survival gauntlet. Um, this level's a little difficult, you know, it's ramping up a little bit, um, gameplay-wise, you know, halfway through the game, we're getting there a little bit, um, you know, it's ramping up the difficulty a little bit, but it's not too hard, um, it's never unfair, um, yeah, I don't know, this one's pretty good, and, um, I never really come back to replay it, but whenever I do, I have a pretty decent time, so, I don't know. Bobbing Barrel Brawl is a surprisingly cool level. You have to use the elephant to shoot down and snipe enemies to drop barrels to let you jump on the water. And it's just such a creative and cool concept that uh, I always enjoy coming back to this level. And um, while it doesn't do anything amazing, uh, just sniping the enemies with the water is just always super cool. And it's a little bit tough too. It's, it's pretty easy to die in this one, just fucking up a little jump. Because those barrels have some wonky hitboxes in the water. So you can you can mess that up pretty easily, and um and it has some cool bonus games you can find too. Um yeah, this is just a pretty awesome one. Tanked up trouble is the cooler trick track trek. If you remember earlier, I know there's been a lot of levels in this video, but if you remember back in trick track trek, I said well there's a cooler level later on in the game. Well this is that cooler version. This is the exact same level, but if you don't collect the gas canisters, you die. And I think that is super cool because not only is it an auto scroller, but you're not even thinking about it being an auto scroller because now you're thinking about getting these canisters. It's like a mind fuck. It's 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 mind raping you. It's molesting you. I would say it is just a complete mind fuck to where you're not even thinking about the fucking auto scroller anymore. You're thinking about damn, I need to get this gas canister or I am going to die. So now it turns in from this really boring fucking oh my god, this is so slow to oh my god, it's running out of tank so fast. And I think that is just a brilliant way to flip the whole level on its head. It's also hard as fuck too, so you're also concentrating on how hard it is as well. So you're literally not even thinking about it being an auto-scroller at all. Um, it's just such a fire level. I love, I, I, I really love this whole series. I love this game, and I do really like this level. Um, it doesn't do anything too great to really set it up, 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 and above, but it is a fire, fire, fire auto-scroller. And that is a rare achievement, friend. Hot Rocket is probably the coolest looking rocket level in the game. And it's easily the hardest. Um, but even though that it is the hardest, it looks a lot harder than it is. Um, and I say that because there's a lot going on on the screen at once. But really, you only have to pay attention to such a small pocket of the screen at a time. To where I think it's bark is bigger than its bite but its bite will still give you rabies you know but it's not gonna fucking go for your throat it'll just bite you on like your uh, like your hand i guess uh, but it is definitely an intimidating level uh, especially only for the second level of the world and um it's always a fun one to stumble into because um i forget about this one for some reason too and then when i get to it i'm like oh fucking yeah dude this one's sick and it's over pretty quickly, a little bit too quickly. I would like it to last longer, but it's fun while it lasts, and it's just a really enjoyable level. All the Rocket Barrel levels pretty much are. The way that music madness just flows with the music, I know that's the whole point of the level, but the way it just flows together is so fucking perfect. Man, this one's so motherfucking fun. 
um, and it's not too long either, you know, so you're in and out pretty damn quick, but while you're here, mm, 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 is it a fun fucking level? There's so many, in, there's so many concepts introduced in this level that are only in this one level. You got, uh, of course, the big music blocks, um, not blocks, but like obstacles. You got the fucking, the, 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 the mallet thing. I don't know my instruments, but you got the cymbal thing. And then you got, for some reason, you got the fucking, um, the gas and fire hydrant fucking thing shooting at you. I don't know why they're in this level, but fuck it, they're here. Um, and then you got the very end where they're fucking hitting with so much force and emphasis on the ground that it's shooting you all the way up high. And it's just a fucking crazy, cool, creative level. You gotta find the secret button. There's really nothing to hate about this level. This one's super fun. The moving platforms may juke you up a little bit, but that's just a skill issue. And if you say otherwise, then grind a tissue. I don't care. Rickety Rails is a pretty great introduction to the minecart world of Donkey Kong Country Returns. It is the first surfing minecart level, and by that I mean it's one of those minecart levels where you jump from minecart to minecart and you surf on top of them. And while it's a decent gimmick, I'm kind of glad it only was in this game. Um, just in general, the surfing minecart levels kind of have some wonky hitboxes when you jump from minecart to minecart but this is a pretty cool introductory level to those kind of levels and the intro where you bust open the entrance to get onto the minecart is always memorable um for some reason the letters in this level really fuck with me like i always miss the timing to get them specifically the g jumping into that barrel at the very end i don't know why i just always fuck up the timing um, but that's no reason to, to keep this level down any. Um, I'm just pointing that out, that it can be a little bit annoying getting the letters. But in general, just playing this level casually, it's, um, it's a cool introduction to these types of levels. And they don't overstay their welcome or nothing, but it's a cool little switch up from the regular minecart levels throughout the series. Mountain Mania is an early Rambi level done right. It sucks we don't get Rambi until the second world, but the first level with him is so good. Oh my god. It's easy, but not in a way that feels easy. You just feel like an unstoppable monster. You are just completely fucking raping this level, and the, the level cannot stop you. You literally tear it apart. You run into obstacles. You don't even stop. You just rip it out of the fucking ground. You just unroot the, the entire wooden structure. It's so cool. Um, and you can actually lose Rambi on this level, and then playing this level without Rambi doesn't even feel bad. Like, this is a Rambi level where if you don't have Rambi, it still just feels like a good level, but, but when you have Rambi, it just feels so much better. It's such a well-designed level, and then at the end when the fucking volcano part's erupting and it's falling on top, oh my god, this is such a cool one. God damn, I gotta wrap up, man. These fucking tropical freeze parts are taking me so long to record that I just got so much to say that I just, I just gotta start wrapping it up. This shit's gonna be another hour-long video. I gotta slow it down. Crazy Kart is the first minecart level in Donkey Kong Country Returns, and ooh, is it a good one. Now, it's not too hard, but it does some pretty cool things. Um, it has that part where it zooms in really close, and you're not at any real danger, but you don't know what the hell's coming up, so it gets you pretty nervous. But on repeat playthroughs, you find out that you were never in any real danger, and it was all psychological warfare. Now, my favorite part of this level is when you exit the cave into the beautiful waterfalls at the end, and you have that big-ass sunset, and you have that big-ass jump down that hill. Pretty much this whole level's fun, but that part in particular is super fun. And the beginning where you have to pound down that switch and like the level kind of falls in on itself is pretty cool too. This is a very good introductory for the minecarts to return. They have been sorely missed and they are sorely enjoyed. Beehive Brawl is such a weird and different level compared to the rest of Tropical Freeze. I think it's because it feels a lot hell of a lot more like a returns level than a Tropical Freeze level, but hey, I don't see any homies complaining. This level is not super great or super crazy, but what it does, it does good and it doesn't try to do much more than that. I do like the honey kind of swinging around the big ass, um, the big ass climbable things. Um, it just feels like a way better and funner version of whatever the fuck tropical, or not tropical freeze, of whatever the fuck returns was trying to do in some of them forest levels. This just feels like they took that idea and just timesed it by like four or five and just made it a hell of a lot more engaging and cooler. Um, the bee gimmick itself is pretty cool. Um, I did leave an editor's note here that says, say something about the shitty letter N hitbox. I'm not going to lie. I don't remember what that means, 
but uh, apparently it was important enough for me to write that. So there, there you go. Low G Labyrinth is low key a cool level. God damn, that was terrible. Anyway, so what makes this level pretty fun is the, obviously, as you can tell, the zero gravity, uh, well, not zero gravity, but low gravity um, kind of tunnel ways. And I just like this theme of the um, the drain pipe. Um, I didn't really mention the theme when talking about it and demolition drain pipe because I was more focused on like the minecart aspect. But now you can actually platform through the drain pipe and it is a pretty fucking cool um, level atmosphere. And um, just, I like, I like how like tricky this level is. This level can actually be pretty tough and it's about middle in the game. It's, it's harder than you would think it would be. And I really like, my favorite part of the whole level is the very end. It's like super tight stress test. And just, um, I, I don't know. I really like the challenge. I really like the gameplay switch up. Um, I just think it all flows together nicely. And it does kind of suck that this mechanic was only in one level, but it kind of makes the level stand out more because of it. So, you know, it is what it is. You take some, you lose some. Spinning Spines is a pretty fun temple level. I do think it's a little bit easier than it should have been um i think this one definitely should have been earlier on in the game because this one's in the fourth world um so i do think it's a tad bit easier than it should be but it's still a good time it's still very fun and i don't want to act like it's not fun just because it's not as hard as i would have liked it to um but i just think that this one's just you know it's a cool gimmick you're just on these like fucking cogs that are just kind of spinning you around and it's very clear and very obvious where to go you know, halfway through, you start platforming around some lava, and, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's just fucking cool, um, I don't really know why there's bees in this level, they don't really make sense, but, um, other than that, this is just a pretty solid one, um, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Here, now, I think Bramble Scramble is the much better Bramble level of the two in this game. Uh, for one, I love I love the way it looks way better. The nighttime sky, I always love nighttime themed levels and games. And just the nighttime sky, the atmosphere looks so good. I think the soothing music fits a lot more with the dimmer night sky. Um, and it's also another Squawks level. And I love the homie Squawks. I love Squawks levels. They're super fun. And this one um, has a little trick that you might not know. But if when Diddy Kong and Dixie Kong are hanging on the bottom of the bird, you can rest on the thorns and not get hit. And I think that makes the level way better. Because when I used to play this game, I used to think that you would take damage if you rested on the thorns, but you don't. So that makes the level way easier and way more like friendly and just way just, just funner, easier, simpler, more relaxing. I mean, it's still a hard level. We're about halfway through the game and this is already a pretty fucking difficult game. But this level, I really like. Um, I don't think there's too much bullshit. I mean, there's a B here and there. But um, I really like this one. It's pretty fun. It doesn't do anything great or grandiose or anything. But it's just a cool, it's just a cool Squawks level. And I think this is one of the more underrated levels in this game. Scorching Torch is a very beautiful level. And the atmosphere is one of the best in the entire franchise. It is just so fun. The, the way this level tells a story as the level is burning and withering away it really feels like the level is just dying and it, it's just such a powerful fucking experience um however i do find that on repeat plays of this level the fact that you have to sit and wait to throw the water to put some of the fire out it's cool the first couple times you play the level but trying to speedrun and go fast in this level can be a little bit annoying because of just happening to stop your momentum and just wait to throw shit. Um, which can be a little bit of a bummer. But other than that, this level is fucking pure bliss. This one is super fucking good. Tippin' Totems is such an engaging and just fun level. And it's pretty tricky too. Um, I love the way it kind of... Uh, advances its challenge throughout the level you can really feel the progression kind of building up with each new mechanic that's taught throughout the level and each totem gets harder and harder and harder to jump on towards and follow and this one i also do remember this one being showed off in the commercials with that hippo part where you bounce on all three or four of those hippos there um which i always thought would be a bigger enemy in the game because they have like f like five seconds in the commercial but they ended up only being in like two levels but you know, at least I'm talking about them now. This is probably the most anyone has ever talked about the Donkey Kong Country Returns hippos. 
And you know what? Fuck it, I'll talk about them a little bit more. Those are my homies, even though I kill them every time. You even have to kill them for a puzzle piece, but I don't know if that's in this level or a different level. I haven't even talked about the totems in this level very much, and that's because I don't need to. They're so fun that if you've played the level, you know just how cool they really are. And I'll just leave it at that. It actually kind of shocked me how much I enjoyed Ropey Rumpus after playing it again. Um, when I went into it, and I always remember this level just being kind of basic and boring, but... Playing it again, it's just tight, it's hard, and it's fun. It's challenging, and it's captivating. You're never really bored of this level. It's just always fun to get through. And um, I love the levels with the parry sections, and this one has a pretty fun parry section at the end with the little blue and yellow bird. Um, and it's not too difficult, but it is near the end of the game, so it does, it, does, it, it does have a little bit of some tricky timings, but it's not super fucking hard. Like, it'll piss you off. It'll just kind of, you know keep you in check make sure you're actually you know have your AA on a, a game on you don't need your AA on not, not it's not one of those kind of games a game um and I don't, I don't know i really like this one and of course it has my my favorite music in the game the fucking the, the cliffside music i've said that a couple times on this video now but goddamn, i cannot get enough of this fucking music in this level oh my god it's so good um and especially, it sounds even better when you're going through stressful platforming. Like, when you're playing an easy easy level with good music, you're like, okay, this is some cool music. When you're playing a hard level with some good music, you're like, god damn, this shit's fire. As the final temple level from Tropical Freeze, I think Slippy Spikes does a decent job. It's pretty unique, and it's pretty challenging, and it's interesting enough for it to just be, you know, a cool level. Um, a cool secret worth going for and getting. Um, I don't think it's super extra or extreme or anything, but I just think it's a pretty fucking cool one. And, and there's definitely some uh, parts here that are pretty memorable, like the swinging kind of hut area. I, I don't even know how to describe that section, but it's like swinging little buildings, I guess. That part's pretty cool. Just the whole concept of the top and bottom being spikes and they just kind of crush in and crush out. Just the whole level is just pretty unique and there's not really a level like this. Um, this concept was seen a little bit in Shifty Smashers, but not to this level nearly at all. Manic Mincers is easily the most slept on level in this game. This cave level is fire. It's easily the best cave level in the game. It's, it's in the last world, so it's pretty dang hard. But what I like about it is that it's just a constant gauntlet of obstacles. In all the other cave levels, it's like, you have this section, and then, oh, go through this burrow. Oh, go through this tunnel. Oh, just do some weird shit. Bounce on a tire. I don't know. Do something. This one? No. You're constantly just dodging these big-ass metal saw blade. I, I guess they're mincers. I would I would assume that the level's called Manic Mincers, and there's a lot of mincers that are manically mincing. So I would assume those are mincers. So there's a lot of mincers all around trying to mince you. And <laughs> I, I don't know what mince means. I'm just going to assume it means like... Um, or yeah, mince is when you, uh, when you cut up like cooking shit with a with a knife yeah mince yeah okay so yeah okay that makes sense at least i think i probably just sound stupid i hope that's what that means if that's not what that means that sounds silly um but uh as for this level it's super fun uh you have Ramby for some reason he's not very good in the level at all you'll lose him i know i did on the gameplay i'm showing right now um but it's just a it's just a fire cave level and it's right at the end of the game so it's hard like it should be it's just really fun i really like it Longshot Launch is such a memorable barrel level throughout the series. I almost have a big old goofy Colgate smile on my face every time I play this one. Now, the thing is, the gameplay ain't too really great, and the barrel section ain't too long, but the little barrel section that is in this level that only lasts for about 20 seconds is just pure fucking bliss, and it's so fun. And I also love that part where you shoot across the stage for like 5 seconds. Again, it ain't no cool gameplay or nothing, but it does look really cool and fancy. And, um, just the challenge of this level, it's a pretty good medium pace, and, uh, if you know anything about medium paces, you know that all it takes is this level and a shampoo bottle. And if you get that joke, well, uh, that's terrible to hear. If you don't get that joke, that's probably for the better. The final level of the secret world and the final level of Tropical Freeze is Crazy Clouds. Now, even though it is my least favorite of the three secret world levels, I still think this is a pretty fucking solid one. However, I do think that the cloud mechanic at first is real wonky and real goofy, and by the time you beat this level, you still won't really feel confident in your skills in it. It'll take you quite a few replays of this level until you feel very confident with the mechanic, and in that way, I think it's pretty 
unbeginner friendly. Um, but the level is not too terribly long, so you'll you'll get it figured out eventually. And um, I do think it's hard, but I don't think it's like fucking unbearably hard like some of the other secret levels in the series. Um, I just think it's cool and it's different. It's creative, um, even though the mechanic is a little wonky. It's still creative, and um, it's just fun, <laughs> really. Um, and then the end, you got the fucking plane shooting off like a rocket, and that part looks pretty cool, and it's fast, and it's frantic, and you start getting tensed up. It's like a final little stress test of the game. And I think this is an excellent way to end the game, even though it's not one of my personal favorites. I really wish Aqueduct Assault was longer and more expanded on. It's a great level for what it is, but I just feel like it's unfortunately too short to really get cooking. It, um, it is like one of those levels where it's not just fun and short. It's like when you finish the level, you're like, damn, that was really short. Which sucks because the Ruined World was one of the most interesting worlds from Returns. And I feel like they just had so much potential to make this level more than it was. Um, but, but obviously, it's still up this high. It, it's still an incredible time. But I, I, I just wish that they did do more with this level. Because what is here is quality and fun. I do you know, um, I'm, I'm not trying to make it sound like this is a bad level. It's not. It's a really, really, really fun one. It's cool. It's awesome. The music's so good. The theming, everything going on is super good and cool. But I, I just think that the mechanics should have and could have been expanded on. Um, but it, it's still, you know, it's up this high for a damn reason. Uh, you know, it's fire. Well, actually not. It's covered in snow, so it's it's cool. My favorite thing about roasting rails is just the absolute sense of urgency. You feel like you just have to constantly be moving forward or else you will die quickly. And so it, it has this, this, this such this feeling of adrenaline and rush the whole way through. And it's a pretty tough level too. So you're just always, you know, clutching up fucking D1, DK fucking mode. You know, you're just pay, you, you really just paying attention um, as best to your abilities as you can. And, um... I really like this one, even though it's a surf and minecart level, which aren't my favorite. Um, this one is probably the best one in the game. And it's just fucking... That's all I have to say. Just look at the fucking level. I mean, look how fucking cool this shit looks. It speaks for itself, really. The worst thing about Sloppy Sands is probably its name, having the word sloppy in it. Anything that says the word sloppy is just plain gross and putrid. But back to Sloppy Sands... I quite like the gimmick of this level. It's just shooting little fucking squid missiles at you, but they're fun to bounce off of. And um, they come back in later levels, but for the most part, they're only in this one. And they're just fun. Um, the whole level is based around these guys. Um, it's not too long of a level. And near the end, you have the squid tower that you have to go through. And it, it's just a very fun level. And it's one that I kind of look forward to in replaying this game. It's not one of the all-time greats or anything, but it's it's a nice level. And especially where it's placed in the game, the beginning of the beach world is kind of a snooze fest. But um, this one's pretty good. Forest Folly is such an immersive and beautiful and just slow burning stage. Well, obviously there's no burning here, but it, it, is, an, it is a nice slow burn stage where it's just... You're just going along with the level. Everything just feels and flows together so fucking nice. The way these beautiful snowflakes fall down and you have to maneuver and weave and dodge through them. Just everything about this one is just so crisp. And even though it's not, I don't think it's in the upper echelon of the fucking frozen levels. I, I do think that it is a magnificent level in what it sets out to do. And I think it takes the, the forest theme of the Tropical Freeze and just makes this level on it so well. This really does feel like um, one of the... Like, like it literally does just feel like a forest level from Returns, but with the snow mechanic thrown into it. And it just meshes together so well. And I think this is probably the most faithful Returns adaptation level from Tropical Freeze. All the other ones are very influenced by the Returns worlds, but I think this one really does feel like the most of the world that it's influencing, or influenced by. Um, for better or for worse, a lot of people don't really like Returns. I do, so I like this level more. But I could see a Returns hater not liking this one as much, but I don't care. I think this one's pretty cool. Even though it's, like I said, not even in the upper echelon of the, the snow levels. I think this one is just, it's just, it's just such a classic. Amiss Abyss 
sure doesn't miss. No, but in all seriousness, though, I think this level has the most balanced difficulty for water levels in the game. Some feel a little too hard. Some feel... Okay, none feel a little too easy. They all feel a little too hard. But this one, I think, feels the most balanced out of all of them. And it also looks the this is the most beautiful. The silhouette levels are the best trend in, in these games. Um, easily the best thing that Tropical Freeze and Returns introduced. Um, well, Returns introduced it and Tropical Freeze kept it going. Just the silhouette levels are so fucking magnificent. And this one being the plunge into the deep fucking sea. Oh, it looks so good. And the fact that you have to swim through lightning reeds by following the fish... Like, you have to follow the, the fucking path of other aquatic li lives in this world. Um, it's just so interactive with the environment. It's just so it's just so different. It plays so much different compared to all the other water levels. And it's very fun. Um, the only reason that it's not any higher is just because I think all the other levels in this series just surpass it. There's literally nothing wrong with this level at all. And literally the only thing holding it down... Is just the fact that there are better levels after this. I literally have no complaints about this level. This shit is gas. My favorite part about Clifftop Climb is just the sheer atmosphere of this level. Once you start ascending up this fucking crumbling canyon, it just, um, which is funny because there's a level called Crumble Canyon, and this level feels more like a crumbling canyon than that one. Um, shots fired, I suppose. But just the atmosphere of seeing the boss arena in the background and the beautiful shoreline of the fucking ocean sea floor just showing you how high up you are in these cliffs just looks so fucking cool. And just the barrel timings, the tight platforming, this is just such a quality level. It doesn't do anything out of this world, but goddamn is it just fucking mwah, it's just such a fun level. It's 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 too short. I would love this level way more if it was longer, but it's just too short. It's just, ah, oh, I just wish it was longer, man. This one's really fun. Seashore War really just feels like a battle against the enemies. Most of the times in these games, um, you're generally more paying attention to the atmosphere in the level rather than the enemies in the level. But here, it feels like you're focusing more on the actual enemies, and I think that that makes this level stand out quite a bit. Um, unfortunately, the actual level itself isn't too, too crazy or too unique. But, like I said, just the onslaught of killing all these enemies and just the real sense of danger and the aroma around this one uh, makes this one pretty fucking quality. Um, uh, you know, I you won't find anyone disagreeing with me here. This one deserves to be up pretty decently high. Oh yeah, and uh, pulling the whole entire fucking pirate ship out of the water is pretty fucking cool too. Um, however, on repeat playthroughs, it does feel a little slow and sluggish, but... um. You know, it, it don't matter. It looks cool enough for that to not even be a complaint, really. I love the roller coaster levels from Donkey Kong Country 2. They're so great. This is the lowest one, and it's still up this high. I love that. This is my personal favorite theme. I love amusement parks in real life, and this one is just so good. The music is so good. I love the colors. I love I love everything about the, um, the amusement park kind of style that this game goes with. And um, now the reason that this is the worst roller coaster level for me in this game is because personally, I like the ones where you jump with the, the cart that you're on as opposed to jumping off of the cart. Um, I just prefer jumping with the cart more. Um, but this one does have a creative way where you have to jump up and open the gates and then you don't want to hit the closed gates. And it's the same thing throughout the whole level, but it does so in a way that it's just fun it's just it never feels old um there are a few tough spots that you'll probably get hit and they it's a little hard to sight read um some jumps you kind of don't really understand what you were supposed to do until you die which is another reason why i do think it is the worst one of the three in this game but it is still really fun and it's a really good level and i really like this one quite a bit treacherous trek is quite a fun level actually for an auto scroller this shit is pretty fucking fuego now it does um, combine Trick Track Trek with Tanked Up Trouble from Donkey Kong Country, the OG, the original, and it somehow mashes those two together and makes one really good, really fun level um, where you have to hit the switches to make the part of the track come back on and if you don't, then you'll drop off and die and it'll just be a terrible, horrible fucking death because you don't know how fucking high up these temples are so you may be falling for the rest of eternity but probably not 
You'll probably just die as soon as you hit the ground, so you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> um, this one, I don't know. It's just pretty fun. Um, the fact that kind of the level doesn't appear until you get to a certain part can be a little annoying, but generally you can't really sp go fast anyway because you just have to be waiting on the little platform, so it won't even catch you off guard, really. And plus, the temple levels are kind of trial and error anyway because they're just so difficult, so dying a lot is to be expected your first couple of times playing these temple levels. Barrel Cannon Canyon is the first great stage in this game, and I really do like it quite a bit. It starts off the um, the barrel uh, theming of just blasting out of barrels. It's very iconic. Whenever people think about Donkey Kong Country games, they usually think of the barrel blasting, and this is the first uh, level to do that. Um, and it's just solid. All the timings are fun. It's difficult, but not too difficult, um, which I, I do like a good challenge. You'll hear me say that quite a bit. Um, I just I, I really like this one. I think it looks pretty too. It looks the same as Jungle Hijinks, but you get a little bit more of the upper tree area without any background trees, and I just think it looks pretty dang good. The theming of Reckless Ride alone can put this level up this high, but the fact that the gameplay is the same prestige quality as um not not prestige pristine quality as the theming makes this level just fucking ooh. You are fighting a penguin in a big robot trying to kill you. What what, what else do you need to hear other than holy fuck, that's cool. And then at the end, this level has enough detail to show him getting parachuted out of the fucking... Out of, out of the mech mechanical robot into a fucking plant's mouth and eaten and crunched terribly, horribly to his dark, deep demise where he will never see the light of day again. Meltdown Mayhem is a perfect way to show how a final level should be done. This level just feels climactic. This feels like the ultimate build-up to the final boss, because it is. And I think that even though this is not one of my favorite levels from Tropical Freeze, um, it is still a fantastic level, and just the feeling that this level encapsulates is just so fucking cool. The magma volcano contrasting with the fucking icicles. The fact that it's a fucking Rambi level, so you just feel like a powerhouse blasting and pushing through everything. This level is just, it's just, it's just memorable. It's memorable. It's probably the last level you will play in Tropical Freeze because a lot of people don't go for the bonus secret world. So this will probably be the last experience you have with Tropical Freeze, and it definitely does leave a lasting impression. This level is pretty fucking good. See, this is a rare instance where bad level design doesn't matter because it's just fun. You're just spammed with a bunch of enemies that you could just jump on and kill. But the level design is so janky and the hitboxes are so whack. But it's just fun. It's just, I don't know what it is. It's like, you know it's jank and you take a lot of hits in this level and you're like, oh fuck man, that's bogus. But it's just so fun to just kill all these enemies. They're just fucking spammed at you and you're just killing them one after another. This is the first level in the series where you don't, uh, when you get hit on your animal buddy, instead of losing your animal buddy, you just take a hit. You have to be the animal buddy in this level. And I think it's such a perfect way to start this trend where you just be forced into this animal buddy barrel and you just go fucking ape shit. No pun intended because I actually don't think either one of these monkeys we play as are apes. I'm pretty sure these are both. Um, I'm, I'm not very educated on my monkeys. Might They, they might be chimps. I, I don't know. Do chimps have tails? Maybe they don't. I don't know. I don't care either because you're playing as a fucking rattlesnake. Um, this is just such a fun level. It's it's it has some bullshit. I'm not gonna lie. There's some jank in it, but holy fuck is this level fun and the atmosphere is so good too. Oh my god, I'm pretty sure this is the last pirate ship level and it looks cool. It's just I don't know I don't know why so many of these levels have this toxic green background, but the one this one this one looks good too. Similar to slime climb. It's just a fucking cool atmosphere. It's awesome. Why Mast Blast is not in the beach world? I don't know. I have no clue. But I don't mind it being in the ruins world because goddamn, it is just such a fun level. The uh, the cannons are back, but they're a little bit more integrated into the map now. Instead of just shooting you, they're actually tearing apart the level as you're playing it, which is just such a creative kind of way to flip the cannon mechanic, which is what the original cannon cluster map should have done. But we're talking about Mass Blast now. Um... You know, and then you go into the pirate ship, and it doesn't happen for very long, but it's just such a cool little section where you blast into the broken hole of the ship, and then you 
go through. I remember that part being way longer when I was a kid playing this level. I'm um, playing it now. It's only like 15 seconds, which I still think is a long time. But my girlfriend Cassidy, she don't think so. Um, and you get to the end of the level where the whole pirate ship's just falling apart, and you're climbing up to the tippy top of it. It's not a very long level, but it's memorable and it's very fun. This one is mwah, classic. High Tide Ride introduces a, an amazing mechanic that unfortunately is never brought back again and later in the game. I would have loved to see this mechanic further expanded on in a much harder version because where it stands now, it feels like it was just kind of missed potential. Um, this Minecraft level is super easy, I feel. Um, it's in the fourth world of the game, which doesn't sound very far, but when there's only six worlds, I mean, this is more than halfway through the game. And, um, it's just pretty dang easy. And I would have loved this one to be a little bit harder. Um, but as it stands now, um, it's, it's good. Obviously, it's up this high. Um, and the mechanic, like I said, super creative, super unique, super fun. I just, I am just longing for a version of this level that's like three times as harder. That, the, the, the fucking switching the sides on the minecart with... 10 times difficulty would be fucking insane and this level's atmosphere the music the gameplay the feeling is all good and fun but i'm just i just really wish that this kind of level came back in the future but as it stands now i i guess i will take and appreciate this level on its own because we unfortunately never got that goaded sequel switcheroo is such a unique level from this game that i feel like a lot of people didn't get to play because it's so damn far into the game that a lot of people suck too much to even get here but if you did you know this level's a straight fucking classic god this one's so fun you gotta fucking hit the blue switch to make all the blue blocks come out and you hit the red switch to make all the red switches come out um it's a pretty simple concept and it's pretty easy to comprehend and understand but there's some difficult type platforming, so when you have a puzzle kind of gimmick along with hard platforming, it's just a super solid level. And you have the secret button you gotta find in this one. It's just, there's nothing really bad about this level at all. Um, and anybody that doesn't like this level just simply has a skill issue and they suck. Which, if they did suck that much, I don't know how they made it here in the first place. I got that fucking negative energy on this one. I don't know where that came from. I usually don't insult people's skills, but here... Nah, you just fucking suck. Shut up. This level's fire. Rambi's Rumble is surprisingly a really good level. You start off with some, you know, some more annoying honey and the bees and stuff. Um, after Hornet Hole, you kind of get into this level and you're like, oh, fuck, another honey level. This one ends up being surprisingly fun. Um, it's, a, it's, it's still hard, but since you got the practice of the first level, you should be getting a little used to the honey by this point. Um, you're still not going to be perfect, but... You know, it's tough. I mean, you know, you're pretty far into the game now, so, I mean, you, you should be able to handle it. But then you get to the second part of the level where you turn into the rhino, the little Rambi, and you just decimate every fucking zinger in, in proximity. All these bees and all these wasps, whatever you want to call them, all these things that you haven't been able to kill, you can just kill all of them with Rambi. And then as soon as you feel unstoppable, then you run into the boss of the world. Now this boss actually chases you a little bit in this level before you fight him, which sets him up to be such a cool boss. And I love that this level does that little chase section and it's one of the more memorable parts of this game. It's really cool. Boulder Roller is just such a good way of showing how you can take a simple concept and just morph it into something just completely grand and great by the very end of the level and just keep on progressively making it cooler throughout the level. Um, it's not very long, but it is a little tricky, and I also love how at the start of the level you see the big ass boulder that rolls off screen, and then it's the last boulder of the level, and it's just fucking huge in this big ass crater that you have to duck and take cover from. Um, it's very clear and easy how to dodge each obstacle, but doing it is a completely different thing. It's a lot tougher and a lot tighter than it looks, and uh, you will probably die a couple times on this level. Um, but it is definitely one of these standouts from the cliff world, and it is just a fucking fantastic level. Even though Foggy Fumes is the worst silhouette level in Donkey Kong Country Returns, it is still a phenomenal level and one of the best in the game. Before I even talk about the level, we gotta talk about the background characters. We got Crocomire Skull and Mr. Game & Watch. Very cool. I don't know why Game & Watch is here, really at all, but he's a fun little easter egg. 
I didn't know who he was at the time. Uh, I had only played Brawl, so I was like, holy shit, it's that guy from Brawl. That's really cool. And I thought I was a super cool dude for telling my dad that. Of course, he didn't care because he just got home from work and thought I was just stupid. And then, of course, we got Crocomire Skull, which does make sense why it's here, because uh, fucking uh, da, 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 Retro Studios, I was thinking the name of the game developers, uh, they worked on some Metroid games, and uh, I understand why Crocomire Skull's here. I wish he was here to throw us a party, because goddamn was he shafted in Super Metroid. But now I just left myself with only two seconds to talk about the level, and I'm just gonna say that it looks nice, it plays nice, and it is very, very, very fucking fun. Um, and that's about all I have to say. So let's go on to the next one. I don't know what that noise was. I'm feeling a little goofy right now. Sorry about that. The thing that kind of sucks with Dynamite Dash is it's a super, super cool level, but it's just unfortunately not very memorable because the levels surrounding it are just way more grand, whereas this one just kind of fades into the back of your mind and it's not really remembered. But when you come back to play this level, you will see just how fucking cool and awesome and creative it really is. And it only used one it only uses one concept throughout the whole level, but it's fun throughout the whole level. You have to go fast, and obviously, as I've said quite a few times, going fast and being a speedrunner in these games um, is actually quite a fun a fun way to play the game. And having this level kind of be based all around speed and, and racing the clock before you get blown up is such a cool and creative concept. Um, and I just think it's unfortunate that this one's kind of slept on. Um, for one, because it's just not as grand and great as the rest of this world, but also because it's a hidden world. So quite a few people probably won't even find this level because the way you access this level in Frozen Frenzy is a little silly. That secret exit's a little, a little ridiculous. Windy Well was windy hell for me when I played this game and beat it for the first time. This level, dude, save states? When I beat this game for the first time, save states? Fucking, without them, I would not have beat this level. This level is fucking tough. But, as I've gotten better at this game, this is a really fun one and a very interesting way to use the wind mechanic. And, of course, it's using the mineshaft fucking mining gem fucking... Um, theming, which I already said I love this theme in this game. I love the music. So the fact it's a fire level to go with a fire atmosphere, I mean, it's a super fun level. And I think the difficulty is very warranted. You're in the final world of the game, so I think the game being as hard as it wants to, I think that's super fucking fair. I hate when you get to the last world of games and it's just, like, not even that hard. No, these old games, dude, these, these, these levels start fucking kicking up the difficulty. This is probably the hardest level in the final world. Um, but it's very fun, and it's very satisfying to just barely thread the needle with some of these fucking timings. And I really like this one quite a bit. Um, I always forget how much I like this one until I come back and play it. Because my memory's just so scarred of when I was little from how much I hated it. But now I just love it so much, it's super cool. Riverside Race is really fun because it was designed to be a speed level. And just having the timer, while it doesn't change anything, you could literally not have the timer in this level and it would just tell you your time at the end and it would be exactly the same. Always seeing your timer is super fun. And I know this doesn't have anything to really do with the level, but um, outside of the level, if you uh, beat it fast enough, you uh, get a reward, which is needed to 100% complete the game. So this level has an additional little fucking bonus, which I don't think any other level in the entire game, you, you have to do a second objective in it to unlock something. So this level is pretty unique in that regard. Um, what makes this level so good too is just how simple it is. And just how, just, that, that's it. It's just simple and fast and fun. And there's nothing really super hard about it, but you're just always just going forward and it's designed to have you be going forward so it's just fun the whole way through i've always really liked this one and i'm glad that it's early on in the game so you can get to it pretty fast whenever you play it button bash is just such a memorable and fun level from this game and it's honestly over a lot faster than i think it is because of just how memorable it is i literally remember every section of this level front to back and um, just all the different little kind of puzzles you have to solve. It's kind of like Rubik's Cube, but it's not really hard to figure out. It's like you're constantly just solving all these brain teaser puzzles, hitting all these different buttons, blasting away in the barrels. 
This is a pretty good barrel level because it doesn't really feel like a barrel level. It just feels like the barrels are in an already level. But when you kind of step back and look at the grand picture of this level, this is a barrel level. You're pretty much in a barrel 95% of the time, but it just doesn't really feel that way. Um, this this one is just super fun. Um, that's really all I have to say about it. It's just a fun puzzle kind of level. Do I even need to say anything about Busted by You? Everyone knows that this level is just fire. As soon as you start the level, you hear that kick-ass music come in. You see the silhouette levels from Returns are back, and you're like, oh, this is about to be a good level. And then it is. Um, first off, something that has nothing to do with the level at all, you can see Samus's gunship in the background. Everyone who talks about this level has to mention that, and I do too. God damn, is that cool? Um, uh, one part that really, really, really sticks with me in this level, and this is a super specific part, but you're going down like a vine, and then if you, if, if, if you line up the leaf formations, it'll form a star. You wait there for a second, and then you unlock a hidden puzzle piece. Oh, that's such a cool secret. Oh, that's so cool. And then just, just just the way the level plays itself, it just feels alive. This level just feels like 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 a living, moving, breathing thing. It's just so lively. It's just so fluid and it flows so good. And I don't see anyone playing this level and beating this level and being like, oh, I hated that level. I never want to play it again. Ain't no homie ever saying that about Busted by You. Especially the music. Oh, my brown. Oh, my God. This level. Mwah. All the silhouette levels are mwah, but Busted Bay. Jammin' Jams, funnily enough, has one of the most slept on jams in the entire game. This banging, busting fucking song, and it's only in one level? Come on, homie. I love the fucking, the almost stormy vibe going on here. Like, it's not completely stormy, but it's like, oh, you know, you know what's coming. And, um, just the whole level itself of these fucking, these, like, sh it, it's kind of like Slam and Steel from Returns, but, like, way cooler and way more integrated into the map. Um, sorry for the shade of Slam and Steel. I, you know, I don't think it's that bad of a level, but the way I just described it kind of seemed like it. Um, no, this one's just fucking cool. And I always forget how cool this one is. Because it's, it's tucked in such a great, a great world of World 5. But this one's just, for some reason, it's just a cool fucking level. It is a secret level, though, so you might not even have ever even played this on your playthrough of uh, Tropical Freeze. Which is a damn shame. Before I touch on the ending of Animal Antics, because I know that that's what you're waiting to hear. I just want to say that the concept of a bunch of gauntlets specifically designed for each animal buddy is super fucking cool. And I really love how they went about doing it, um, with each section getting more difficult than the last, except for Ratley. Him, at the very end, is a pretty easy um, section. It is a little bit of a stress test, though, but for the most part, his section is so fucking easy. It's like, why does this even exist? Um, but now to talk about the squawk section. Now, it is rough. Easily the hardest part of the original three games that's not even a contest but as a level basis i don't think this level deserves to be called the hardest level in the entire series because of a hard 25 second part of a level however that 25 seconds is a fucking nightmare dude you can eventually get used to the controls but it's fucking rough that windy squawk section actually gives people some fucking nightmares, dude. It, 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 it caused a lot of people to not beat the secret world. I, I, I know it did, which sucks because the final boss in the secret world is super cool. And this level being a fucking gatekeeper is a little bit of an asshole for that one. I've always really liked Tippy Shippy, and I don't really know why. It might have something to do with the squid enemies coming back. I've always really loved them. But I think just the absurdity of these big ass pirate ships and these tall ass cliffs and pillars it's just so goofy and just so wacky that it makes me just love the level um my least favorite part is the uh the uh cannon flap parts where you have to time your jumps in between the cannon shots um i just think it's a little bit slow to do and um it's not the most engaging gameplay but when you boost into the backgrounds onto like the big ass ships um, that part's super cool. It looks super cool, and it's just a fun little section. And then um, when they start shooting the cannonballs into the foreground and start breaking apart at the end of the level, that part's pretty fucking cool, too. 
overall this is just a really fucking cool level and my favorite um, cliffs level of the game I think it's an excellent fucking level and a high point of the game I think um, the cliffs world really isn't my favorite um, I mean it's fine but it's not my favorite world to get to but playing this level always puts a smile on my face on this portion of the game Frantic Fields is such a cool fucking gimmick for a level. You're just in the middle of a fucking tornado. That's just so fucking cool. And the gameplay is super fun. You even get Rambi in this one. But again, it's another one of those levels where you don't even need Rambi for the level to be fun. But it's still fun with Rambi anyway. I love when levels do that. There's like two ways to play the level and they're both equally fucking great. Um... Just the level itself, you know, it's just it's just cool. It's fun to play. Um, it's fast. It's not too long, but it's long enough to where it's it, you can remember all of the levels. Um, the, the best part of the level easily by far is the end where you're in like the literal the middle of the tornado. That part is just so cool. Um, this whole level is just so cool. Um, world three in Tropical Freeze is probably my least favorite world of the game. But this level is definitely the highlight of the world. Um, it's just so fucking good. Swinger Flinger is the first temple level from Tropical Freeze, and they're here to say, Listen, we know that you came from Returns, but this time we're not fucking around on these temple levels, because god damn are these ones tough. This one's not too bad, because it is the first one, but it's still a noticeable difference compared to the first temple level from Returns. This one will fucking spank you a little bit if you're not careful. Watch out. Um, and it's just a fun time. It's super fun. Not getting spanked. That's not a fun time. But, 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 well, I, I m moving on. Uh, this level is a super fun time. Um, it's just, oh my god. It's, I, I don't even know what to say other than just to look at the fucking screen. Look at the gameplay that's going on. This shit's just fire. It's just cool. It's tough. It's challenging. It's rewarding. It just, every tropical freeze temple level is just so good. Some more than others, but, for the most part, these, these, oh man, they're just so, oh my goodness. And, and this being the first one just sets just such a good expectation. And, and uh, Jagged Jewels is Jagged Cool. Excluding Golden Temple, I think Jagged Jewels is the best temple level in the game. Not for any real particular reason, it's just fun to play. It's hard, you have some timings, but you never have to wait too long. Um, most of the time you're waiting is just, whew, okay, got this jump, let's do it. Instead of more of, oh my god, I'm waiting for a jump. Um, just in general, it looks very pretty with the nice purple gems kind of spiking down on you. The, uh, the way the jewels rotate around can trick you up, and you never really feel like your death was not your fault. Everything in front of you is very easily telegraphed at you, and you will never, ever, ever feel like you had a bullshit death on this level. It's very obvious what to do, it's very fun what to do, and this level isn't too long either, and you can speed through it pretty goddamn fast if you're skilled enough, which adds bonus points for me. Parrot Shoot Panic is such a cool and unique style of a level. It doesn't even really feel like a level of this game, it feels like a whole different game. Um, but it's fun, it's super cool. I mean, yeah, it can be slow, um, you know, replaying it. Um, if you keep dying over and over again, because this level is pretty tough. So you kind of can get a little bit slow, because it is a little bit of an auto scroller. Okay, it's, there's no little bit about it. It is an auto scroller. But it's a fun auto scroller. I can't, I, I know, I almost just smack, I did smack myself for saying that. A fun auto scroller. What the hell? What is that? Well, I'll tell you what it is. It's Parachute Panic. Um, this is the last honey level of the game, and thankfully, um, the honey is the least of your worries in this level. You're probably not going to die to the honey at all. Um, it's just kind of there, more so to remind you that it is a honey level. Um, but in itself, just falling down these chutes panically on the parrot, um, as the name would, uh, believably suggest, it's just a fucking fire level. It's super fun. It's, it's just so, di that's all I can say. It's just fun and it's different. And I really like coming up across this one. I used to fucking hate this level. Oh, dude, this shit was so hard. It fucking pissed me off. But now, hell yeah, man, this level's the tits. And I'm an ass guy, but still, this level's the tits. It's fire. In a game full of levels that stick out, I think Crackshot Croc is probably the level that sticks out the most from Donkey Kong Country 3. Not only for one, because of just how different it is and how it plays and feels, but also because it's just one of the most quality levels in the game. 
um, you just have this fucking reticle just chasing you the whole time trying to shoot you down and it does not go away. And you can either A, take cover, or B, dodge it. Now, the speedster in me loves to dodge it instead of waiting and taking cover, but obviously that's a little bit more risque. Um, as I was replaying this level, I kind of realized that they took the concept of webbed woods from DKC2 and they redefined it. So in this level, when you miss your web shot, you still take a hit, but you don't immediately fall down a pit and instead you fall into some lava, which gives you time to kind of regroup and recon us, um, your, your kind of senses and shoot your platform back up, giving you a second chance, which I think is just such a way better way to do this kind of level. And it's honestly crazy that they took one of my least favorite levels and made it into one of the best levels. I've always really liked Lemguin Lunch. This one's just really fun. It's simple, but it's super fun. And it's nice, and it's short, and it's fast. And I just love how you start in this harsh fucking snowstorm into this nice, beautiful fucking orange sherbet cream soda fucking sky. And it just it just looks so nice on the winter in the winter level palette and just everything about this level is so fun getting a continuous bounce on all the penguins both of the little uh, mini games are fun um it's just a fun concept throughout the whole level it's not a hard level really at all it's just super fun to play through levitation station is a great level um but that's all i really got to say it looks beautiful it's fun it's groovy it's different um uh, but it really all it is is it's just a hard and challenging level through and through um, it is a secret level, so it is to be expected to be difficult. But um, I think that's really all this one is. It's just fun, and it's cool, and it has some interesting, cool stuff. But at the end of the day, I think it's just a hard, tight level. And, um, of course, you got the part where the, the, where the blocks are falling, and you got to use the gravity of the falling momentum and uh, kind of jump up the falling blocks. And that part's just super cool. But um, apart from that, this is just pretty... Pretty cool classic level. Um, I don't see any homie hating this one. I think this one deserves to be up in the upper echelon of this list. And if you don't have it up here, then you probably just suck. Bopopolis is way too hard to only be the second tempo level in the game. But goddamn, is it so fucking fun. Its concept is just so simple. All you're doing is just jumping on enemies. But yet it just flows so beautifully and perfectly and it's just so smooth and it's so fun. And this will probably be the level that you die on the most. And so it'll make you just get really pissed off and just start to probably really hate this level. That you'll unfortunately not realize just how fun it really is to finally get that winning attempt. Because this level really is a gauntlet of challenge. But when when you do get that good when you do get good enough to where you can beat this level first try every time, you will just realize just how fucking good good this level is and even though it's so simple it's so fucking good it's it's that it's just great it's fantastic such a standout level from this game and a game and a game full of standout levels when the tropical freeze commercials ran on tv i remember jelly jamboree more than any other level being showed and it's for a damn good reason this level is just straight fucking fun it's just, you're just bouncing all over. It don't really change much other than that. I mean, there's different types of jelly that do different shit. And the level's not even that long. But it's just fucking fun, man. It just flows together so fun. It's not really too hard. So it's kind of a free flow, little fun level. fee fi fo fun fun level. Um, you just jamming along. I really don't have anything to say. I don't, I don't really know why I like this level as much as I do. I shouldn't. It's easy and it's simple. But goddamn, is it fun? And goddamn, is it so cool? And goddamn, uh, 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 uh ding dong. I don't know. This one's fucking great. Now here we got a really good fucking Rambi level on our hands. Temple Tomple is such a fun level. The background looks so beautiful inside the temple and outside, especially outside. Ooh, that skyline. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. and then. You're just fucking rushing through with Rambi, and there's actually some fun secrets to explore around the map, too. You know, you're not punished for just going forward because the level's meant to be played with you just holding forward and just ramming through everything. But if you take your time and go back and backtrack, you'll find some cool secrets hidden around the map, too. Um, which I do like that. Um, but for the most part, you're just running through the hoops of fire, you're just cracking down, destroying this whole level. Um, it's pretty much just a straight path, which is why this is only this high on the list, but it's still really, really, really fun. It's just the latter half of this level isn't nearly as dynamic as the first half. 
but um, it's still a very fucking fun level. This is a great one. Mwah! Classic. Frosty Fruits is one of those levels where when you beat it, you just say to yourself, that was a mighty fine piece of quality art. Everything about this level comes together the way it's just so intricately designed to just be optimally fun. And it's not even super hard really at all. But you don't even care when you're flowing through this level, when you're slipping and sliding and gliding around. It's just so fucking fun. And it's the first level of Tropical Freeze where the harsh freeze kind of levels start to take over. Which is just the best part of the entire franchise in my opinion. All these levels together are just such a good fucking conglomerate of levels. And this one being the first one sets it off to an excellent start. It concludes the storyline of World 5 with the juices and jams turned into the popsicles for the big bad boss. For my personal favorite boss in the entire series, Bashmaster, the Unbreakable. Um, he has the best boss theme too, don't at me. Um, but this level is just so fucking good. And it doesn't do anything over the top or extreme or grand or, or, or extra or anything like that. It's just so quality it's so crystal cold. It's so mellow. It's like there's like there's like a, I, I you just, you you just gotta play it, man. It's just you just gotta you just gotta know to know, you know. Probably the most different level in the entire game is Liftoff Launch. Now I don't even really think about this level when I think about the Rocket Barrel levels, but it is probably the coolest Rocket Barrel level. Instead of going from side to side, you're going from bottom to up, bottom to top. Low to high, I guess. Um, I don't know. This one's not very hard at all, but since it's the only level like this, it kind of, you're not really expecting it, so your controls are kind of fucked up, and you don't really know how to play it well. So even though it is a super easy level, you might die quite a bit because you're just not used to the way it plays. It looks fucking phenomenal. It only lasts like a minute, which, again, I think is a super long time, but my girlfriend Cassidy just don't seem to agree. We just don't see eye to eye on that one, unfortunately. Screech's Sprint is just such a fun and cool and unique idea for a level. Both of the race levels in Donkey Kong Country 2 are some of the best in the series. And this one you play a Squawks and you're going against an evil bird named Screech. And this motherfucker will cheat. He will fucking glide through enemies and obstacles. He don't give a fuck. He don't have to give a fuck. And meanwhile you're over here trying to shoot these zingers down and shit. And you're trying to race this bird and he's cheating. It's horse shit. Now you do get two little shortcuts, but only baby bitches use those, and even ba bigger baby bitches use the X-Plate where you can just completely skip the race by damage boosting through the top of them, but you gotta be a real fucking loser to do that, I'm gonna be honest. It's one of the coolest levels in the game, and you're gonna skip past the part that makes it cool just because you suck? That's so lame. Um, to be fair though, doing this level legit is pretty fucking hard. Even as someone who's pretty good at it, it can still trip me up sometimes. And that's saying a lot, because I have spent way more hours on this game than I should have. And I uh, will continue to spend more. Um, but yeah, it's just such a cool fire um, final level of the game. And it's one of the most memorable parts of the game. I really love this one. I bet some people fucking hate this level because of how hard it is. And you know what? That's a goddamn skill issue, because this is easily easily the most fair level in the entire series i'm gonna come out and say it every single jump is very clear how and where and why you're supposed to do it at what time and just the only thing that can even remotely give you issue in this level at all is yourself everything else this level does flawlessly literally it's just a platforming fun fair gauntlet it, the way the way the level literally like times itself to where the platform opens right when you're about to jump because it just the, the the way the level flows like you're gonna be at this spot at this specific time and it just switches instantly while you're mid-air so you're literally jumping into the void and then the platform just forms underneath of you as you're landing just the way it just revolts on this ticking timer of just fluidness oh my oh my goodness this is easily the best temple level this shit is gangster Minecart Carnage, you already know. This is probably the most iconic level in the game. Whenever someone thinks of the first Donkey Kong, you think of that motherfucking minecart level. And there are two minecart levels in this game, and this is clearly, clearly the better of the two. Uh, everyone thinks of this level for a reason. It's hard as fuck. For World 2, this level's super hard. 
Uh, but I kind of like it like that. It's kind of like a bridge that's like, listen here, bucko. This is as far as you're getting. Either get good or get lost. And I kind of like that. Uh, which does suck, though, because it probably did keep a lot of people from playing and finishing this amazing game. But, I mean, it's just, it's just is what it is. Get better. Stampede Sprint is like a minecart level with no minecart. Um, it's easily the funnest minecart based style level in this game by far um, The additional factor of like having to look out for your bird on top to get that last bonus game is just such a Creative concept flipped on its head entirely because not only are you looking for your safety But you're looking for your little homie safety, too And it's really it's short and it's really fun and it's really fast and it's really awesome This is such a cool secret level. This is a level that deserves to be in the secret world Bombs Away is easily the most creative and fun minecart level in this game. Full stop. Just the whole idea of this mole throwing fucking bombs at you from the foreground to the background and breaking the level and these fucking crystals are falling on you. And there's actually some pretty tight jumps here too. Um, you actually have to duck. I think this is the first minecart level where you have to start using the duck mechanic while you're in the minecart, which was never a feature in the original game. So it is a new spin on the minecart and um it just uh, it's just really fun i mean i really love the the whole old timey town underground mole town in the background throughout the level i love the nice beautiful blue crystals all around the map um just the cave setting in this game in general is really pretty and, and this level it's easily at its best and i always 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 look forward to playing this i always look forward to playing this world in particular but this level in this world is definitely the highlight Without me even needing to say a single thing about this level, you can just tell that it is definitely the most different and most just original level from Donkey Kong Country Returns. It looks different, it sounds different, it has two completely new enemies that are only in this level and they stand out so much. You got the koalas and the little fucking Koopa clown cart looking fucking machines, propeller machines, and then you got the tikis that shoot fucking dark matter darts at you and you're platforming on nanners and oranges and raspberries and strawberries and cherries and fucking blueberries and there's just all these golden little structures everywhere and you're all up in the clouds and it's just such a cool magical fucking level and it is easily one of the best in the game and it is easily one of the best rewards for getting collectibles in a, in a platformer ever just always unlocking extra levels on a platform are super fun, and it being one of the coolest and most wacky fucking wonderful world levels in the game is just such a solid reward. It is such a good final level to this game. Fucking love it. Rocket Rails is such a cool double gadget level, and by that I mean its first half is a minecart level and the second half is a rocket barrel level, and both sections are real fun and real cool and real creative. I love how there's just fl fish just floating around in the sky. It just looks so goofy and wacky, um, but I think it's better that way. This level's not even too, too hard, but it's hard enough to where you have to pay attention. And the rocket barrel section at the end um, is pretty fucking cool, too. Just, just the whole idea of adding both of these into one level is just such a cool gimmick, and I'm glad that it is in the secret world, because it really does feel like a reward to unlock this level. This one's super cool, and... Um, even though it, it, it doesn't do anything too spectacular and too crazy, and you don't really have that much going on, I think, just, I, think, I think just combining those two levels is enough to put it up this high. But the fact that the gameplay is super fun too just even makes it even higher on here. Um, I literally don't see how anyone could hate this level. It's a fucking certified classic. I've always really liked Toxic Tower in this game. It's the penultimate level of the game, and by God, does it sure fucking feel like it. It's stressful, and it's scary, but it's never been hard. A lot of people complain about this level being super hard. Not me, though. I've never really found it that hard. I've just always found it very fun and very enjoyable to play. Um, I like the different animal buddies you get to play as. Um, I just like the tight corridors trying to, you know, zoom up your way towards this tower before you get engulfed with this fucking toxic acid. It's just such a fun, cool level to kind of finish off the game. And it's really, really, really fun. And it really does set the tone for the final battle. Even though there is one level after this before the final battle, this feels more like a final level than the actual final level does. This one's fucking great. 
Stop and Go Station is one of the coolest ideas for a level in the original trilogy. This level's super cool. It's super scary, too. The way the entire fucking level lights up green and red. And just the way the monsters just pitter-patter their feet as you hear them run. They're super creepy. You know, for Super Nintendo standards, I mean, they're pretty creepy. Uh, and as much as I like the fact that this level is based off rushing through sections, it's it's one of the only levels in the game where you can just skip the whole level <laughs> with the, with a shortcut at the very beginning. Uh, which makes speedrunning this level suck because, oh, you actually get to a fast level and then boom, you can just skip the whole thing. It's like, what the hell, man? But uh, I, I really do love this level. It's awesome. Homecoming Hijinx is just such a fantastic level that it makes me want to start Homecoming Hijinx without home hijinx. Um, no, uh, the best way I can describe this level is just fantastic. We are at the part of the list now where all of these levels are what make this my favorite series of all time, right? And it's it's hard to really explain the reasoning as to why these levels compete against each other now because it really is just neck and neck where these levels are just fighting fucking tooth and nail to see which one's better than the others. And really, it, it's just up to preference at this point. I think everyone can agree that from this level to here on out, all these levels deserve to be at the top of the list. And these are all the pinnacle of game design and what games should strive to be in the future. And is just, oh my goodness, just, I'm not even going to talk. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my best to not even talk about the atmosphere for this final world. Because if I did, this, this video would literally be another fucking hour long. So I'm, I'm going to try to summer it now. But just know, just know that I, I, I definitely could talk about the way these levels look for another hour if I wanted to. Because, oh, oh my lord. Mole Patrol is the best rocket barrel level in Donkey Kong Country Returns. And I don't really think anybody is going to contest to that. Um, just the whole idea of these moles jumping out with parachute balloons trying to kill you is cool in itself. But once you find out that you can actually pop their balloons and send them to their ultimate untimely demise, it becomes even cooler. Um, and then just the whole part where the train at the very end, it starts going into the wall and you have to follow the burrow that the mole train is doing, which that mole train will then later be the boss of the world. It just all comes together very nice full circle. Um, and I like the old timey background. Um, I said that for Bombs Away and I'm going to say it for this one too. Um, it just looks very, very, very nice. Um, it's just, um, it's just super fun. It's not really hard. I mean, rocket barrel levels are hard in general, but as a rocket barrel level, I don't think it's very hard. Um, it's just nice and fun, but you still kind of got to pay attention. There are some tighter sections, but for the most part, you can pretty much just relax and enjoy this very, very, very cool level. And you're about halfway in the game, so... It's a nice little breather. You kind of take a step back and realize, wow, this is one magnificent fucking game. We're only halfway through. Sawmill Thrill, don't have to say anything about it, but I will because that's what I made this whole video to do. This is a great phenomenal level. The stormy atmosphere, mwah. The fact it's a minecart level already, mwah. The fact that it's in a fucking sawmill fucking factory machine place, mwah. The fact that halfway through the level, your minecart gets turned into a boat and you have brand new mechanics that are only in this level and never seen again and they're the most unique part of the minecart levels in this game. Mwah. It's just so freaking cool. <laughs> Damn, it's so cool. I started coughing. I coughed. I caught a cold. It's so cool. God dang. Um, yeah, that was a really shitty joke. God damn. Uh, but yeah, this one's just super cool. And then at the end, you got the big ass saw chasing you and it's crafting the level in front of you as the level goes on. This one's just super cool, man. And the music, bam, dude, it's just, ooh, I bet some people would have this level even higher than I do. And I have it up pretty damn high, but this one's just a pretty cool guy. Iray 8 is such a climactic and fun and frantic fucking level. This shit is so great. But then, when you take into consideration the part that it's the second act of the Squidicus storyline from Returns, oh my god. The continuation of the fucking squid, the uh, giant squid levels, are, are it's just so fucking good. And even though this level, I don't think, is nearly as good as, um... 
uh, Stormy Shore from Returns, I think this one is still one of the biggest highlights from Tropical Freeze. And just a, a pretty big highlight in the series in general. This shit is fire. And it's easily the best water level in the series. E easily. Easily. Like, fucking, it's not even a contest. No, no difficulty at all. Literally everything about this level. The fact that Lockjaw Saga comes back. Lockjaw Saga. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's the best part about Donkey Kong Country 2 water levels. And they brought it back for this level and this level alone. Oh my goodness. That shit is fucking gangster. And just, oh my. Just every, just you, you know. If you played it, you know. You know that this shit is the tits. And here we got my favorite level of the game. Now I know a lot of people fucking hate this level. For me, I really like it. Lightning Lookout is so fucking fun. First of all, the atmosphere. Oh my god. The fact that the lightning is not only a background and, L and like environmental mechanic, but also like a fucking gameplay mechanic. Just that in itself is pure immersion right there. Number two, the fact that the lightning actually flashes where it's going to hit before it hits give you, gives you ample time to get out of the way. I also love how they coded in the lightning hitting the water, making you deal damage if you're in the water because water um, conducts electricity. Um, they just thought about everything with this level, man. There's some parts where you have to use the lightning to your aid, where it's the whole level it's trying to kill you and you have to actually use it to your benefit. Um, it's pretty late into the game, so it's challenging, but it has every right to be. I mean, it's damn near the end of the game. It's almost like the final boss. Um, and it's just super, it's just, I, 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 you can, you can literally go as fast as you want, just as long as you can dodge capably. Um, literally the only waiting you have to do is waiting for the lightning to strike down on certain enemies, but it looks so cool, and it's just so cool to kind of manipulate the lightning that's trying to kill you to hit the enemies for you that I don't even mind waiting for those small little sections. I, I really, really, really like this one. I like the dark, stormy atmosphere. I love everything about it. This is a really, really, really fun level. The Factory World from Returns was one of, if not the best world from that game. So Frozen Frenzy does not disappoint. Um, this is probably one of my, if not my most favorite level to come back and replay whenever I beat this game because of just how challenging and progressive the difficulty is in this level. It starts off pretty tough, but by the end of it, you're like, God damn, this shit is fucking tough. And just the way the mechanic is slowly but surely more integrated into the map is just so cool with the electric platforms. It is, it's just so fucking baller. The intro where you turn the facility's power back on, that's always a memorable part. This one's just super cool. Purple's my favorite color, so to have this whole level kind of based around the purple color, I just, I love it. I love it. The best rocket barrel level in the entire series is Blurry Flurry, but it is a close competition. Mole Patrol stands its ground pretty damn hard, and it was a little difficult choosing between these two, but I think Blurry Flurry just has a lot more going on that just makes it better. Um, you know, you have the bat in the background, Frozen Solid from Crowded Cavern, another rocket barrel level we talked about earlier on, um, which isn't as good, but you know, it's still cool to see the big bat make a call back and the big old thing of ice. Um, you got the end where you turn into a snowball, and even though it only lasts for 15 seconds, which I'm telling you is not a short amount of time, that's a long time to last, I, I promise. Um, it's still a cool and amazing set piece of the level and super memorable, even though it's not hard or challenging at all. It's kind of just an auto section where you have to jump like two times, but it's still pretty fun. Um, and just the whole setting of the fucking, the, the, the army shooting snowballs and shit at you, trying to kill you, and you gotta jo dodge the trajectory of the, the the weapons being shot at you is just super cool the way the level is kind of falling and crumbling on top of you that it's it's pretty damn hard you know even for someone like me who's pretty good at these games um this level can still fuck you up a little bit and uh i just think it's fun and it's fair and it's cool and it's uh just fucking cool awesome <laughs> The only bad thing I can even think of saying about Haunted Hall is that it sucks that this background and theme was only used for one level because goddamn the background looks so fucking cool for this level. And the fact it's only in one level sucks so bad, but it does make the level feel more unique and different as by proxy. But now on for the level itself. The gameplay is so cool. The fact you got this monster chasing you. Um, if you hit the red barrels, you're like scared. You're like, oh my fucking god, he's gonna get me. And he will. Oh, you will hit that red barrel, and you will die. This is a hard level. Um, <laughs> but it's really fun. 
and the roller coaster levels in this game are just so fucking great and um just the way there's just this constant timer that's ticking you to your death if you don't hit the right barrels in time it's a bit this whole level is just one big stress test and it's just super fun uh, like I said the, the theming looks super great um, just everything about this level is really fucking great really fun really awesome uh, I do hate the way the bonus level are the bonus secret rooms are in this level like you think that it's just a jump you have to make, and it's like, oh, you actually went into a bonus game. I have to sit here and wait this long-ass time to do the bonus game. Yippee. But, I mean, that's not really a complaint. I mean, you're doing a little bonus minigame. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people find that fun, but as a speedrunner, I fucking hate running into bonus games on accident. It just pisses me off. But yeah, this level's great. It's really fun. 9 out of 10. Love it. Smoky Peak really makes me wonder why there's only two levels that you're forced to play as Rambi in this level. Um... Temple Tobble is really good, but Smoky Peak is just in its own fucking league. This level looks super good. It plays super good. Its challenge is super good. It's just so fun. It's just everything about this level is just so fucking good. Specifically the visuals. Oh my god. This is easily the standout volcano level of the game. And I'm glad that they gave us one last silhouette level in the final world of Returns. Because goddamn, does it stick with you after you beat the game. The level is not even that long. But you just remember every single obstacle. Every single part of the level. You remember the end that's tucked between the lava fucking pools that shoot out of the little upside down volcano. You remember the part where you have to shake the Wii Remote at the very end. Because the floor is crumbling underneath of you. You remember the parts where you have to jump up and hit the gears with the Rambi face on them for the next part of the level to open up so you can get to them. It's just everything about this level is just so fun. It's so fast. It's so fluid. It's fair. It's fucking mwah, 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 mwah. classic. Super classic. I really don't know why there wasn't more Rambi levels. This one is fucking phenomenal. I think the best level in Donkey Kong Country 1 is Snow Barrel Blast. And a lot of people hate this level because it's way too hard, but I love the challenge. I love, I, well, I love everything about this level. I love how hard it is, first of all, first and foremost. I love how there's so many different little secret tech you can do. There's uh, grabbing the metal, the metal barrel and going super fast off the edge, uh, off the slope, I meant. Uh, you can time barrels at a specific point to shoot like one, two, or even three barrels ahead. There's a whole little separate secret route you can go to skip the hardest part of the level. Um, you get a secret 3-up balloon if you do the hardest part super fast. Um, the atmosphere, the way the level starts getting more and more snowy, more and more blizzardy as the level goes on. This level is fucking phenomenal. And anyone who does not like this level, I usually don't say skill issue too much, but it's, it's literally mad because bad. People hate this level because they can't beat it very well. I think this is a fucking perfect, perfect level for the type of game that Donkey Kong Country 1 was trying to be. And I have no doubt that this is my number one level from this game. The only thing I need to say about this level is the fact you are quite literally battling a mountain, crumbling, falling avalanche on the remains of fucking dinosaur bones and fossils in a blizzard storm. That's it. That's all that's all I need to say. This is this is the best tropical freeze level and one of the best levels in the entire series. If you don't have this in the top 10, throw the whole list away. It's terrible. It's garbage. Throw it away. Put it in the dumpster truck. Take it out back. It's terrible. Everything that I could say about this level, you already know what I'm going to say. I could go into how beautiful it is. I could go into how cool the mechanics are. I could go into just say just how fucking magnificent it flows and how it platforms and how just the, the just, just you know the fire enemy that shoots a flaming fish that homie looks so cool on this level, the way he stands out in contrast. I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not... Li listen, listen. This level's fire. If you disagree, just shut, the, just shut the fuck up. I don't care. Go away. Stormy Shore is the Donkey Kong Country Returns level and one of the most iconic levels in the entire series. I mean, it's up this high for a damn good reason. You're battling this fucking octopus the whole time. Well, I can't really say battling because you don't really get to injure him or fight him at all. 
but you are escaping. That's a much better word. You are escaping this octopus. He is out for blood. He is bloodthirsty. He's tearing down all these pirate ships, and he's coming to get you, and you're just kind of going through his domain. And it's just such a fun level. And um, it sets up the story for Donkey Kong Country uh, Tropical Freeze um, with the underwater octopus level, which is cool, but I don't think it's as cool as the OG original octopus level or squid. I think, it's, I think his name's actually Squid Illus or something like that. I don't feel like loading up the game and looking in the menu, but he does have a name similar to that. And he's just such a cool, iconic monster and enemy from, this, from these games. And it's just such a good level. I love the atmosphere, the theme, you know, etc., etc. Anything you think I could say about this level, I'm, I, that's what I'm thinking. Um, I remember this is the level that they showed off in the uh, in the commercials back when those aired for this game. It's just such a fucking masterpiece. Rickety Race is by far the best level in this game, and the best level in the original trilogy. It is so fun, so unique, so creative, and so different. Now, it is a faster level, so I'm going to have to kind of cycle through this pretty fast because this level does end quickly. I mean, it is a race. But I love how you can play it through the perspective of a beginner, whereas you don't even have to interact with the race at all and just play it like a normal level because it is a little tricky. Or you can play it as an expert and just focus on getting first. I, I love how there's just the this dynamic of a regular level and also it's a competition. And it is so fun. I will never, ever, 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 ever get tired of playing this level. And it already has the best theme of the original trilogy with the disco uh, carnival amusement park theme. It's just everything about this level is fucking perfect. Donkey Kong Country as a whole is known for being one of the most difficult, challenging, and treacherous series of games of all time. It has been cemented as a classic and a fantastic series by many. Its challenge is not something everyone can beat but everyone can't respect. So would you believe that my favorite level in the entire series is the most calming, immersive, relaxing, beautiful, soothing, and most easy level in the entire franchise? This is not only my favorite Donkey Kong Country level, but my favorite video game level of all time. This is the closest thing to perfection that I have ever played, period. The pure serenity of Sunset Shore is unmatched and unrivaled by anything, period. I hope everyone who finished this absolute monster of a video enjoyed it as much as I did making it. I want everyone to know that you are important, you are valuable, and you are significant. I look forward to seeing you next video, but if not, then this is the drop-off. Take care.